ability, aptitude, expertise, genius, gift. I'm the fucking talent. Hey, what's happening, Mike Schmidt, 40 year old boy podcast? I hit that hey kind of hard. That's a hard hey. Somebody likes a hard hey to start the goddamn show. And yet here it is. Ooh, I'm like, it gets caught under my throat there. <coughs> Jesus, what the fuck? Was that a. Might have been a lightning bug. I think I inhaled a lightning bug. I'm in a, I'm in a meadow. I'm not going to lie. I'm doing this show from a meadow because I fled. It's finally, it, it happened. I finally had to do it. I, yeah, I know you're thinking to yourselves, well, I'm sure Mike's got this totally under control. Everything's fine with him. No! Clearly it is not. I have fled to the country. I am sitting in a meadow right now. I just inhaled a lightning bug. And uh, if you were here, you would see it glowing in my throat. Don't you want to see things glowing in my throat? I can't tell you how many times I've thought to myself, you know, my uvula is fine. If it was glow in the dark, though, then it would be totally classic. Now, let me ask you this. If you got a glow in the dark uvula and you're laying in bed, of course, you're sleeping with your mouth closed because you're not a fucking animal. What the fuck is wrong with you, mouth breather? Close your goddamn mouth. I don't give a fuck what you think you're doing. Oh, my nose is stuffed up. Oh, I have adenoids or sinoids or sinuses or whatever the fuck. Fuck that, man. Fuck allergies. Fuck sickness. You breathe through your fucking nose when you sleep. That's it. I don't want to hear it. Oh, I'm a boxer. I broke my nose 10 times. So fucking what? So go get some surgery. Carve out a hole in the middle of that fucking skull and breathe like a normal human being. Quit opening. You're just opening your mouth and you're drooling on yourself in the middle of the goddamn night. There's nothing worse. You don't want to wake up in a puddle of drool. Who are you? Can you say, will you have any self-respect for yourself if you wake up in a puddle of drool? I don't think you will. Uh, it's bad enough you don't have self-respect because you know, you're like, well, but my nose doesn't work. It's like when guys get old and their dick stops working. They're like, oh man, my cock stopped working. I feel like less of a man. Well, the precursor to that is if your nose stops working because your dick, look, you only need that, what, 10 times a day, maybe? <laughs> twice to jerk off and eight times to take a leak, that's fine, then you're done. But your nose, you need that all fucking day. I need it every second. Fuck, with this show, I probably need it every every half second because I'm trying to breathe in and stay alive. Uh, because, you know, I'm going to run out of breath eventually doing one of these shows because I'm coughing everything out of my goddamn mouth and use as much as I can as I'm pushing it out of my lungs and yet not breathing in. And then, you know what, I'm going to choke myself and wind up dead on the microphone. Uh, Ah, there's breath. Look at me sucking it in. All right. Um, but yeah, if your nose is done, just fucking get it, get it, go to a doctor, go to a, go to Dr. Nose and get it fucking fixed. By the way, Dr. Nose. Oh, geez. That was uh James Bond. That was the lesser villain. Actually, he took on Dr. No and he defeated him. And then a couple of years later, they're like, check this out. It's Dr. Nose. And, uh, and that movie was not successful at the box office at all. That's a George Lazenby. Not gonna, and that's not, you know, I'm going to be honest with you. Wasn't even a studio that did it. Lazenby filmed it at home. He's like, I can be, uh, I can fight a Dr. Nose. Why not? And then Lazenby's just filming it around his goddamn house as he's going, bada, bada. Don't, don't tell me that he doesn't do that. Every guy who played Bond does that at some point, right? Every guy who played Bond, a Timothy Dalton, uh, a Daniel Craig in, in the current day incarnation, hopefully an Idris Elba eventually because we need him to be Bond. Uh, who else is there? Whatever the fuck. Uh, Sean Connery, who just turned 90. Uh, you know what? If you're 90, if you live to be 90, just just be a fucking dick. And I'm sure he's probably like in a bed somewhere and he's all fucking wrinkled up and bored and, and he's tagged all the fucking pussy he could possibly do. But if you're 90, do something. You got to commemorate that shit. You can't just let out a press release that Sean Connery was silently gumming a zwie back as he turned 90 years old. Fuck that, man. You got to establish yourself. You're you're one of the eight people in the world who played fucking James Bond. You should do either either do this. If you're James Bond, if you're J if you're Sean Connery, you turned 90 years old, you got to either jump out of a helicopter in a tux, right? You got to do something stupid like that or go to a casino and like challenge some guy to Baccarat. Was that his fucking game? I don't know. He was the shaking, not stirred guy. He had a gun in his shoe or did he have a gun in his shoe? Or is that get smart who has a gun in his shoe? No, get smart has a phone in his shoe Well, because he's kind of a pussy. Who wins in a fight? James Bond or fucking get smart? Uh, Maxwell smart. I know, I know, I know. Um... But if you're Connery, you got to announce that you're 90 in a fancier way. You got to make sure that everybody knows it. You got to fucking, you know what you do? Wear the Zardo's outfit. That's what you do. Even at fucking 90, you don't want to go wear the, like the Indiana Jones dad thing. Cause everybody hates you for that. Everybody's so mad that you ruined Indiana Jones, even though you didn't do it, it was Spielberg's idea. And I gotta be honest, thinking about it. I don't remember if I hated that movie or not. I think it was okay. That's last crusade, right? That's last crusade. And what's the one with the fucking, uh, the, the magical refrigerator. I don't, I don't remember that. Is that the crystal skull? I, yeah, I gotta be honest with you. I'm feeling pretty good about my Indiana Jones knowledge right now. I just, I think I just pulled Crystal Skull out of my ass, and I think that is absolutely magical fridge. And I think Last Crusade is definitely fucking Sean Connery. When my buddy Jason does the fucking fact check on this show, which he does, and he makes me look stupid every time because I'm always fucking wrong. Uh, I, I'm, I'm firmly confident in myself in knowing that I've gone ahead and nailed the Indiana Jones stuff correctly. And uh, Indiana Jones Temple of Doom, that's short round. He's there. Kate Capshaw, they're going to eat some scorpions. Kalima, Kalima, heart out of the chest. That's all happening. And uh, and Giant Boulder and Dan Aykroyd is a pilot. That's fucking, uh, uh, that's Indiana Jones in the, and uh, 
The first one, Raiders of the Lost Ark. There you go. I think they changed that name, though. I'm not joking. It, I saw it on, uh, on on Netflix, and they called it like Indiana Jones and the Rumpley Pumpley or whatever the fuck, or some weird name. They changed it to the <laughs> Indiana Jones and the... <laughs> which is really weird to try to spell. Um, and I don't know. That's, no, that wasn't the Benny Hill music, although that's that's actually a better name for, for Raiders of the Lost Ark movie. Indiana Jones and that... <laughs> Uh, do you know how hard it is to try to do the fucking that? Because I've look, man, my mouth doesn't work anymore. I haven't used it in quarantine except to talk to you fucking guys and eat. It is just it is my deft tongue has lost all of its fucking dexterity. I, I is there like a fake pussy I can eat? Like I seriously, I I'm I'm gotta be. I I, used, I did a joke one time where I said I wish that there was a batting cage for fucking. Because I would gladly go pay like 20 bucks to get my stroke back. Like literally because it, it was after my divorce and I wasn't fucking doing anything. And that's how I feel about eating pussy now. Now look, it comes back to you. There's no doubt. I give all you all you pussy eaters out there will go ahead and rally with me when I say that it's just like it's just like riding a bicycle. Uh, except very not, not as much hair pulling is going on. So I will tell you that eating pussy is very much like riding a bicycle, just uh, not nearly as much hair pulling, which is good for all of us, honestly. And I will tell you this. Very rarely do you get to ring the bell. Uh, certainly you can work the little switch, but uh, very, you will not get to hear the bell very often. Uh, although that'd be great if you went down on a chicken, she just started going ding, 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 ding. That's fucking awesome. Now you're, now you're, that's like a, a pussy eating game show. Now put me, sign me up for that goddamn thing. I'll just fucking just bury my face between your legs and wait till I hear ding, 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 ding. And just, there you go. Now we are off and fucking running. I won the goddamn rice and and whatever's behind curtain number goddamn three. <laughs> just gonna let me just go ahead and rub my uh, whatever the fuck is in my eyes out of my eyes so I can then see it right now as I got the fucking wet. You know what? I'm gonna have to use curtain number three to wipe off my face, but that's fine. I don't mind doing it because I was more than happy to fucking dive in and get the goddamn job done because I'm Big Daddy fucking Kane. Uh, the job. Oh, never mind. I'm not gonna do any Big Daddy Kane rhymes. Why would I do that? Why shouldn't I do that? Why? What if I did? What if that's all I did? The rest of the goddamn show was Big Daddy Kane rhymes. Oh, you would love it. Uh, all right, so let's slow down. Let's go ahead and fucking <laughs> put it in, put it in gear. Oh, what was I talking about? I was talking about, uh, Sean Connery. Oh, I was talking about the guys who are at Bond. Yeah. Tell me, I guarantee you this. If you were, if you play James Bond, if you're Timothy Dalton, if you're fucking, uh, George Lazenby, if you're Sean Connery, if you're Roger Moore, uh, if you're, he went Moore and then Dalton. And is it, is it Daniel Craig after Dalton? Who am I missing? I gotta be missing a Bond. Uh, but you know that those guys, at some point, when they were fucking a chick, they walked into the room and went, da -da, da -da, either naked or not. I don't know if they walked in with a heart on and did it. I have no idea. But you know they fucking did it. And you know if anybody else is na na named James Bond or, you know, there's got to be, because there's like a bunch of Mike Schmitz, right? So there's got to be a bunch of James Bonds out there, which are you mad at your family for that? Or are you happy with your family for that? Uh, because you're thinking to yourself, well, I mean, this is a cool ass secret. Well, I mean, it's not even cool ass anymore. Because that's another thing. These fucking things, they meant something to me or you or us. Like, this is funny. I was watching a baseball game today, and the Cubs hit like six home runs. The, the Cubs did. And each one of their outfielders hit two. So it was, it was unique. Now, it doesn't really happen a lot. Six home runs is a lot for a team to hit in a game. But then when it's two from each of your outfielders, that's pretty insane. Uh, and the announcer said, oh, this is the Noah's Ark of home runs today for the Cubs. And I immediately knew what he meant. I knew he meant two by two by, you know, two by two by two. And I, I got it right away. And part of me went, man, that's, that's, a that's, I, I don't know if you, it, it couldn't have been spontaneous. He was probably thinking of it all day once they started to get a bunch of bombs. But at the same time, it's a pretty clever turn of a phrase. I was like, well, that's not bad. Uh, but then part of me also went, well, wait a minute. If you're a young person, like, do you even know the fuck Noah was and the ark and the animals and all that bullshit, right? I know there's the movie. Isn't there a Steve Carell movie? But then that's also fucking Bertie Magoobian's Wonder Papuvian or whatever the fuck. What's that movie? It's a uh, uh, Magomium's fucking Wonder Emporium. It's a Wonder Emporium. Bert Macorium's Wonder Emporium. I don't fucking know. Why does Steve Carell make these movies with these stupid fucking names? Just stop. Make a movie called Jim. Could you do that? Although I guess that's too much office -y. Because then it's going to everybody think, if Steve Carell's in a movie called Jim, they're going to be like, ooh, it's the origin story of Jim from The Office. What could the origin story be? He was a fucking accountant or whatever the fuck he was, or a sales rapper. I don't even know. Remember The Office when it was fun? I enjoyed Like, I've talked about this on this show before. I, I liked The Office for, uh, for you know, the first, like, whatever the fuck years. But the second Steve Carell walked out of the building, that was it. I was done. I still watched it. 
I still watched it fump for a round as Will Ferrell came in for an hour. And then I watched James Spader come in and ruin everything. Uh, and it just, it just, uh, and then I saw, you know, fucking uh, Rain Wilson be Rain Wilson, which I'm sure he's a lovely gentleman. He's terrific. Uh, and he's fucking good on that show. I can't shit on that fucking guy. That's ridiculous. That's like saying, oh, I fucking can't watch Seinfeld anymore because Kramer is such a fucking dick. And I mean, Rain Wilson isn't a dick. He's a good guy. I don't even know why I, I was going to go. Down, you know, it was weird. That was just a reflexive decision to shit on something. And there was no reason to shit on it. Why would I shit on Rain Wilson? He's good. He's entertaining. He's fun. Uh, I just saw some ad for some, he was involved in some fucking crank call documentary which literally that's there's three words that should never be put together in any fucking fashion or or chain and it was it's a documentary about some famous crank caller like the the pacific northwest's jerky boy or whatever the fuck and rain wilson is in it and he's you know talking about how incredibly funny it is and how amazing it is that this guy's a whatever in in the trailer and i and i watched the trailer on my twitch channel uh, and i was streaming and i go oh good it's rain wilson doing that rain wilson thing that he does and I immediately regretted it I, because I went, why you like Rain Wilson? Why are you why are you saying a bad thing about Rain Wilson? I don't dislike Rain Wilson. I can't think of anything I've ever seen that made me go, oh, fucking Rain Wilson, except for that trailer. It was just this weird instinct inside me to shit on something. And I don't know why it was there. And I was disappointed in myself when I did it. And I don't even remember correcting it in the moment. I think I let it just stand there in the acrid air. And then I dealt with it later. Like the kind of smell you have if you leave fruit on the countertop too long and you see buzzing little flies, then a smell of a sour banana. Oh, man, don't make me smell your sour banana. <laughs> Put me on the pussy eating game show, but I will not participate in smelling the sour banana. Um. All right, man, how you doing? What's going on? Are you all right? Everything's gone to hell again. I, I And I didn't. I'd waited. I, I here's the thing, like I waited because I don't know if I thought a good thing was going to happen. I, I don't know what I could have possibly been thinking. Was I like, oh, you know what? I, I'm betting the world's going to change over the weekend. That's what I because I, I had that. I sat down to do the show on Friday um, and I, I it was not good because all the fucking stuff that happened last week had happened, as you know. And so I was in my brain about it. I'm like, oh, fuck. And it just it again, when I come to you to talk to you about this kind of stuff, inevitably it winds up being you know you you know where i stand on this my hand my mind hasn't changed what, what if i came on here all of a sudden i was like you know what i gotta be honest with you this uh this donald trump guy he's making a lot of sense and i gotta agree with this guy you know because uh, what are you gonna do um what if i did that what if i did a full 180 i mean i because i and i won't lie to you i i actually in my brain because i was thinking because normally you know i just open up the microphone and i wind up talking and that's how we get pussy eating game show but I still have to have a general idea of what I what I want to speak about or speak to you about. And uh, and it's harder when, again, I'm not living a life. I'm not going to do anything. Nobody gives a fuck how hard this show is to do. Shut the fuck up. But in my brain, I was like, what can I what can I bring to the table? And then I actually thought I'm like, well, what if you did like a like a parody? But they didn't know like you didn't I didn't announce it. And I just did a full on straight like I was a. Trump guy, you know, like I had converted or something. And then I'm like, well, that's just fucking lame. Because, again, it's one of those deals where, like, you're never going to, you're never, look, you're not going to believe it. No one would fucking buy that in a million years. You know why? Because I have a fucking brain. And, you know, I'm not one of those fuckheads who think that this guy is anything worth fucking liking or idolizing or respecting or any of those fucking things because he's the goddamn worst. And how, how, how is he alive? I don't understand how he is still fucking alive. Somebody like there's again, we talk about James Bond. We talk about Mission Impossible. There's how how is Tom Cruise not hanging from four fishing lines in the fucking White House Oval Office and dropping three drops of poison in a diet fucking Coke? Why the fuck isn't this happening? What is going on? Yes, I know it's because fucking uh, uh, Ethan Hunt works for jo- for the fucking government and works for Trump. And but he's gone rogue. He's got the knock list. He's got all the bad things. He's literally everybody. He's 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 Dr. Strangelove. He's starting a fight in the war room. I mean, he's doing all of the dumb shit. I mean, dude, this guy, here's how here's how fucked this guy is. All right. As we all know, everybody knows how fucked he is. And I know you're like, Mike, it's just a hamster wheel of you telling us how fucked he is. But yes, but that's but that's the looming black cloud that is over all of us at all goddamn times. And now it's spreading into the fucking street by my house. By my house today, they had a fucking truck parade for Trump. I think it was like 80 trucks and a bu- and 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 just in each truck is two six foot, 300 pound tubs of fucking mayonnaise driving around and going woo and fucking, you know, they got the barbed wire tattoos and the fucking 
dragon patterns and they're in the flags hanging off the back and and they're chanting and they and, and look man i i don't i don't love my sports teams this much i i don't understand the the look you can support a politician all right you want to support somebody that's fine i guess he's not even a politician he's just he's more of just this spectral wraith who's come to haunt us for the rest of our lives and that's not even a fucking joke he is he is a greasy spray tanned fucking phantom who will never be shaken from our lives. You will never you will always be stained with him. Like I, I've said it before, I, I am fifty three years old. I am fifty three. Okay, uh, I'm assuming I well at least I was before quarantine. I assumed that I had you know twenty five years left. I thought I'd make seventy five, maybe a little uh, a couple more years. Why not? Uh, I, I gave myself a couple extra years. Who knows? Now, this is, you know, presupposing climate change, bringing the heat death of the universe before then. I'm talking about just me as an engine, just me as a machine, as a human machine. I think I've got 20 more years left. Will they be good years? I don't know. I may be I may be sleeping on a pallet somewhere. I may be under a viaduct. Uh, as I mentioned, I may be in a field swallowing fireflies. I don't fucking know. I can't predict the future that much, but I think that I'm no matter what the, whatever the future brings, whether I'm to enjoy it or endure it, I assume that I will be here for at least another 25 years. That's my thought. Okay. 75, 76, 77, 78, whatever. Sometime around then I wind up checking out and, uh, and then they, they dig the hole. They push me in. They cover me up the end, but, um, but as a 53 year old man with 25 years, and again, like I said before, quarantine because now with quarantine, I have I, I it's a coin flip. I don't think I'm not sure about 25 years. I'm not sure about 25 weeks. I'm not sure about 25 days. And I can only tell you this. I'm not sure about 25 minutes. Who knows if my fucking heart explodes because my face smells like butter and chocolate all fucking day long. And it shouldn't. I wish it didn't. It's my own fault. I'm just two fisting garbage and throwing it right down my goddamn throat. I'm I'm just filling my gullet. The only thing missing for me is Princess Leia on a chain. I don't know why that isn't happening. Leia, I know. Shut the fuck up. Uh, that's the only thing I'm missing in my in my abode. I need I need a fucking I need a carbonite hand solo and a fucking Han solo. Yes, I know. Shut the fuck up. Jesus. Uh, get off my Chicago dick. Princess Leia, Princess Leia, Han Solo, Han Solo, whatever the fuck you say. I don't give a fuck. I don't care. Remember that. I'm not a Star Wars guy. I don't bang my dick on the desk over goddamn Star Wars. I don't mind it. Certainly, I'll go ahead and check it out eventually. Not like Star Trek. That you'll never get me to check out. I don't give a fuck about melodramatic captain. I don't care about Russian navigator. I don't care about hot black uh, desk lady. I don't give a fuck about Scottish engine dude. I don't care about vampire fucking bloodless, coldless, weird eared fuckhead. I don't care about any of those dudes in... in I don't give a shit about their spaceship, which looks kind of like a gardening implement. It doesn't matter to me. I don't care about green chicks, except Yvonne Craig. I don't care about tribbles. I don't care about your troubles with them. That means nothing to me. I don't care about Chris Pine. I don't care about Khan. I don't, I just, it's not my thing. If you love it, that's great. Please recognize I'm not here going, fuck Star Trek. It stinks. I, I am not that person at all. I hope you love it. I hope every time Star Trek comes on, you sit there and simultaneously just fucking blow ropes into your pants. I hope you fucking love it. I hope if you're a lady, you just instinctually reach down between your legs and ease the seat back. If you know what I'm talking about. I mean, I, uh, I, I just that's fine. Enjoy it. Love what you love. But for me, Star Trek is is like putting my hand in the garbage disposal to try to get a quarter that and and, and the switch is broken and you never know if it's going to turn itself on. You think to yourself, well, it's not, I just give up on the quarter. I don't give a fuck about Star Trek. I haven't seen the movies. Uh, didn't they go to San Francisco and talk to a fish? I think that happened at one point. And, and here, but here's, you know what? That's funny, though. I don't watch these movies. I don't give a fuck about Star Trek. I don't care about fucking Fantasy Island Jones. I don't care about any of those dudes. But I will tell you this. Uh, I know virtually everything is to know about a lot of these because just by osmosis, you absorb the plot points. So I know they went back in time to San Francisco and they talked to a fish. Uh, I remember fucking Fantasy Island screamed and he, he caused some rift. And then, of course, Shatner yells his name. Um, and I, I think uh, Pointy Ears died at some fucking point. And then they had to they put him in space like so much space garbage. They had to flow him out there. I don't know. Then they came and saw his ghost later. Wasn't there, <laughs> was there a Spock ghost? I don't know if there was a Spock ghost. Uh, and then eventually Chris Pine took it over. And isn't he? Now, look, I'm just going to say this because th- th- and this could be a pop culture osmosis working against me. Uh, Chris Pine is a gay gentleman, if I remember correctly. Uh, is, is his Shatner gay? 
Or is he even a Shatner? I don't know if he's a Shatner. And is it is that one of those fucking... Uh, who are the guys? There's James Gunn. There's only four dudes that do these movies now. It's James Gunn, uh, Zack Snyder, who's who's busy preparing the Marvel or whatever the fucking DC, <laughs> the, the Snyder cut of the Justin Justice League. I don't. Again, it's it's just and look, because I'll tell you what, love what you love. If you love if you love Zack Snyder, if you love if you love Aquaman, then good for you. I think that's fine because again, what else is there to pay attention to? You're like, if, if it comes down to me, if you said to me, you know what, Mike, you've either got to pay attention to President Fuckneck or you've got to watch Aquaman flip his hair a couple of times and talk to a trout. Guess what I'm fucking choosing every goddamn day and twice on fucking Sunday. Let me see my dinner with fish. I will watch Aquaman in his green pants and his orange suit, and I will watch Black Manta Ray get punched in the head uh, in slow motion because you're underwater. You can't have to throw a real punch underwater. Uh, I and then Princess Gills is that who fucking Aquaman's girlfriend is? I don't have any fucking idea. I don't know anything about it. But I'll tell you what, I would prefer to learn the ins and outs and every single possible angle of Aquaman and his origin story than have to deal for one fucking second with politics and the world again. I want to disassociate. Believe me, I want to. This week I watched movies. I watched a bunch of movies this week, and then I actually watch movies along. So I usually I do movies with Beach. And then I do movies with Pat. And then I was going to dive into Twitter and start reading some stuff. This was Thursday after the fucking, after what happened in Wisconsin. And and I just was like, you know what? Fuck this. I can't. I can't. I won't. I don't want to. Here's what I want to do. I want to watch a movie. So I watched Donnie Brasco by myself. I watched some Johnny Depp. I watched some James Russo. I watched some Al Pacino. I watched some Michael Madsen. I watched some Bruno fucking Kirby. I watched them all get the job done. That's what I did. And when it finished, I was like, ah. And then, of course, then I dove into Twitter and read everything that I didn't want to read. God damn it. Why can't I stop myself? It's a drug. It's an absolute drug. And like I said, what else is there to fucking do? I wish my face smelled like pussy, but it smells like butter and chocolate all fucking day long. God damn it. I'm I am. I'm Augustus Gloop, but also I like butter. Like it's like this weird thing. I'm like I'm Marlon Brando in Last Tango and I'm Augustus Gloop in Willy Wonka. And either way, you're both going to wind up in the fucking chocolate pipe. (laughs) Let me tell you something, man. You can hate me, whatever the fuck. I'm terrible. I don't give a fuck what you got to say. You're mad at me about Star Trek. Everything's forgiven right now. I'm instantly forgiven. I'm like a guy who fucking murders 10 people and goes, I wish Jesus liked me again. And Jesus is like, boing, that's all you had to do was ask. And then they're friends. And then Jesus gives them wine and a fish. And the guy eats for seven years in prison or whatever the fuck. But just the very fact you could have hated the first whatever the fuck, I don't know, 15 minutes of this goddamn show. But the second I somehow tied up Gloop and Brando and Last Tango, butter chocolate and one chocolate pipe on you. Jesus Christ, I'm a king. I am a fucking comedy king. Not the king of comedy. I'm no Rupert Pupkin, but I'm a goddamn comedy king. And I don't even know if I'm a comedy guy anymore. I don't fucking know. What am I? Because, you know, it's funny. They do these fucking comedian shows now where they're like, hey, man, what if you came to do our Zoom show? And I see these comedians all doing their Zoom shows. And I talk to my buddy, Bill Dwyer. I'm like, Bill, what are you doing? Like, he's like, I'm doing these at Flappers, whatever the fuck. And he's got he's got a backdrop curtain that he puts up. And I go, do you stand up? And he says, yeah. And I go, do you hold like a microphone? He goes, yeah, I kind of I think he does. I don't know if he does it all the time. But that all ju- that all just seems like. Like the Brady Bunch rehearsing a time to change in the garage, right? Doesn't it? You know, it's, it's time to change. Then it's time to change. Like literally, it's it's just you're in your house, man. And I don't and I don't know how it works. I haven't heard any laugh. I've done Zoom calls with with some lovely listeners uh, before. They were very nice to have one for my birthday and things like that. And uh, and I'll talk and like there's nobody laughing. Like nobody laughs at anything I fucking say. And in your brain, you just go, well, I, I know I'm supposed to be having a conversation with these people, but if I'm trying to be funny or if I'm even me and I, and it's not funny and they're not enjoying it, I just want to flee the interview. I just want to run fucking uh, at Lundergaard style and get the fuck out of there. I want to jump in a Cadillac and drive till they got to tackle me in a goddamn fucking hotel room later because Shep Proudfoot's got the goods on me. He's going to fucking rat me out. Um... So I don't, I don't know, man. I, I just, uh, I don't know how they're doing comedy these days, but I think to myself, I'm like, could I do it? And if, if, cause, cause also look, if you're changing the paradigm, if you're saying, well, stand up isn't really stand up anymore. It's all different. It's all changing. There's zoom rooms and everybody's in a square and you're doing this and that. Okay, cool. That sounds good. Well, could I do one of those shows and just tell like a 10 minute story? 
You know what I mean? Like, or, or do I have to? Do I have to stand up and go through all the fucking motions of being comedy fucking king? And 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 hey, how you doing? What are you doing there in the front row of that Zoom square? <laughs> hey, nice backdrop, nice background. I bet it's been hell for you, trapped inside that apartment forever. <laughs> Whatever. How you guys doing? That and the car thing. Did you see the car thing now? Out here in L.A., comedians are performing for people sitting in cars, and instead of laughing, the people honk their horns. I'm not fucking around here, man. I think my brother did one. I know I saw his buddy Flip Schultz did one. Uh, Graham. Graham did one. Uh, and then just the other night, like David Spade and Rob Schneider did one. Now I got news for you. If, if that's, that's tempting. Okay, if you got David Spade and Rob Schneider performing for a bunch of cars, that's one thing. But uh, Because Spade is there. But if I ever get Rob Schneider... Uh, and he's in front of my car and I'm at the driver's seat in the drive at, at the driver's at the steering wheel. He's going down. I'm sorry. I'm not, I'm not going to pass up that opportunity. How many times in my life am I going to get fucking Rob Schneider dead bang in my fucking headlights? I don't know. I, I, I have to take the opportunity to run him the fuck down. And, and his, uh, L King, his daughter will sing, uh, what did she sing? Rehab? No, she sang a song like it was. She's one of those chicks. You know, all the, the white chicks who sound like fucking black 40s chantuses. There's Amy Winehouse and uh, and then there's L King. And then uh, who's the other chick who's like uh, there's not here because there's rehab. I wrote, no, no, that's the rehab song. Who's the other chick who's like, I'm, a, I'm and I am. This is going to sound indelicate and I don't mean it to. But literally, she's like, I'm fat and it's cool. Who is that chick? Um What's the song? Uh, oh, she's all about that bass. There you go. That chick was all about that bass, about that bass. No treble, believe it. Uh, but that's the thing. It's all those kind of little throwback songs. And who else? There's some other chick who did a song like that. Wasn't her name Duffy? Remember Duffy? Because this is another thing, man. Duffy. Now, I, and look, I'm going to be getting in trouble because I'm going to go off on this tangent. And uh, remember we talked about me remembering a bunch of stuff, all the Indiana Jones stuff. I'm about to ruin all that street cred by ruining Duffy here. I think I'm right, but I could be wrong. Uh, this might be true about Duffy, but it might not be. But I hope it doesn't cast too many aspersions. Because again, no matter what, not her fault. But like Duffy did that. She put out one of those throwback albums and I have it. And it's also good. You know, it's just uh, everybody's using that. They got a trombone with the soup bowl on it. <laughs> Whatever the fuck. And she's crooning and everybody's happy. And she's and, and it's all that throwback, you know, 1961 nonsense, which is fine. There's nothing wrong with that. I mean, look at us. The country's going back there now as it is right already with fucking separate lunch counters. And, and you know, black people, unfortunately, no matter what, whenever they go out to lunch, not only will they go out with a friend, but they'll have another friend, a German shepherd. That's going to happen from now on in this country if people have their way whenever black people go out to lunch they'll have to have lunch because look and i like dogs uh but i don't think these dogs are too excited about having lunch with these these unfortunate souls who are going to be fucking cast out of our country or marginalized yet again because these fucking assholes won't fucking calm the fuck down and jesus what is going on out there i am hidden barricaded in this fucking apartment because i can't possibly go out and face it i don't want to swim out there and see what the fuck is happening um, but Duffy did Duffy put on an album like she and again I'm tiptoeing on this because I don't know whether I should say it but I'm just going to say it uh, I think Duffy uh, put, did an album and then unfortunately uh, was the victim of crimes and uh, and then and I, I only know that because I remember her being real promising and I loved the album and then I was like oh man it's just one of these women who just got eaten up and by the fucking industry uh, and then you read what happened and it's, it's like Kesha with fucking Dr. Luke and all that bullshit dude this world is just you know what we need to blow it up are you all right look calling occupants of interplanetary craft come and blow us up please come I we, we demand it we need it. And I know you're like, well, Mike, when uh, not all of us are that bad, it doesn't matter. We've we've had our time. We've taken our chance. Uh, here's what I think uh, aliens should do. They should come down here and they should be like, well, all right, let's kill all the people. But uh, the fish are pretty cool. And uh, and we kind of like giraffes and certainly wombats are fun. So there you go. Just let the animals live. Like I talked about that video game Last of Us. Just turn this fucking planet over to the creatures and see what happens now. There'll be a bunch of lions who will bite a gazelle. That's going to suck. We know that's going to happen. But, I mean, you can't argue with that. That's just fucking lay of the land, baby. But but animals are mindless. They're just fucking eating machines. I Believe me, I recognize that instinct, okay? You find me a lion that doesn't smell like butter and chocolate. I'll, I'll, there's not, it's not going to be. Right now, I smell like butter and chocolate. They're going to smell like butter, chocolate, and gazelle. You know what I really have a problem? If I smell like butter, chocolate, and gazelle, then that, I'll tell you, I'm going to say this. This is completely true, and I make this promise to you. As my friend and my listener, uh, if you ever run into me and you're like, holy fuck, your face feels like gazelle, I will start Weight Watchers. 
there you go. Take that. If you want to remind me of this, if you want to bookmark it, if you want to go ahead and make a time code and mail it to me. So I remember that if you ever run into me and my face smells like gazelle and, uh, and if there's blood all over my neck and shirt, then you can just go, wow, man, your face totally smells like gazelle. I will go on a calorie counting system. I will call Oprah or no, who's the Weight Watchers chick? Oprah did. Uh, she doesn't do that anymore. She was like, because that was the thing for a while. She's like, oh, slim. Shouldn't she do slim fast? Which is again, hey, drink a shake and lose weight. Here's me. I don't know if you can. I, I'm holding up the OK sign so hard you can probably hear it. Hey, drink this shake. You lose weight. Mm hmm. Here's me giving you the OK thumbs up because that's exactly what I want to do. Power down some nutritious weight loss shakes. Glug fucking glug. Hmm. You know what? I have never thought before that the possible key to me losing weight was some sort of Neapolitan beverage. But thank you. I'm glad that strawberry, chocolate and vanilla have formed this unholy alliance to try to knock a couple of inches off my waistline. Thanks, fellas. Um, I'm so excited. I'm in bed with big Neapolitan. That's who I'm in bed with. Now, let me ask you this, folks. If you had Neapolitan ice cream, do you scoop it across so you get all three or do you dig them out? Do you just eat the uh, the strawberry first and then the fucking chocolate? It's like Spumoni. Isn't Spumoni all fucking fucked up like that? Is Spumoni in segments? I don't know. Is Spumoni in chunks? Who's got a chunk of Spumoni you can tell me about? Um, but Spumoni's like pistachio with chocolate and cherries in it, right? Am I wrong? I don't know. It was one of those joints, like uh, Spumoni, in the West, on the West Coast, Spumoni's a fucking myth. It's a mystery. Spumoni's just like, you know who he is? He's like a fucking cop. You got to meet in an alley late night to give information so he lets your brother out of stir. That's who fucking Spumoni is. But fucking out in the Midwest, you know, Spumoni's all over the goddamn joints. Spumoni, every Italian place you go to, you eat your fucking Italian food. You're like, oh, man, can I have, literally, and this is not a joke, can I have a wheelbarrow full of spaghetti? And they're like, manja, manja. And they roll it out there. And, you know, by the way, that is Mario who works there. It's a me, a Mario. Here is a wheelbarrow of a spaghetti. And then he just fucking, and again, I just, I, like, I'm burying my face between your legs to win a game show. And here you say, ding, fucking ding. I'm going to bury my face in a goddamn spaghetti wheelbarrow. Cacage. Just face down. Chomp, fucking chomp. Let me ask you this. Are you, are you a fork spinner? Do you cut your spaghetti? Are you one of those fucking psychopaths? You ever see those idiots? They get a fucking knife and fork and they're cutting their spaghetti up so they can eat it like a child. What the fuck is wrong with you, man? Eat your spaghetti like a man. I won't be excited or happy until you give me one plate of spaghetti that's just one long fucking noodle. And I'll spin it the fuck up. I'll put that big ass goddamn knitting ball of yarn spaghetti in my fucking mouth and then I'll just slurp in the less of the noodle. I'll just fucking hoover it up like Neil sucking up fucking lentils off the carpet. I don't give a good goddamn. Just fucking get me in charge of one fucking noodle and I will rail the shit out of it. I'm going to fuck that noodle blind. Yeah, baby. Get me on a pussy eating contest. Get me in a goddamn noodle eating game show. I'm on fire. I'm going to be dead soon. You know this. If you want to do and these are things I'm good at. I'm good at eating pussy. I'm good at eating noodles. Or at least I thought I was. I don't know if I, well, let's put it this way. I know I'm still good at eating noodles because I've only had to eat those for six fucking months. In every incarnation, I eat a tortelloni. I eat a tortellini. I eat a fucking ravioli. I eat a ravellini. I eat a raviolo. Which you ever see a raviolo if you know what the fuck that dude? This is completely true. Ravioli is like a bag of ravioli. All right. It's just like fucking pillows filled with cheese or beef. You boil them up, you cover them in butter, and you just choke them the fuck down, and then you're just happy forever. That's what ravioli is. You know what a raviolo is? <laughs> there was a dude, he was eating a bowl of raviolo once, or ravioli. He's eating ravioli. He's like, ah, oh, this is delicious. You know what I like about it? Uh, it's just, it's never ending. It's just constant pillows filled with cheese, and I love eating it all the way. However, you know what? You know what really set this off? Hold on a second. Let me tell you this. You know what really set this meal off? What if instead of... 25 small raviolis, you were to somehow bring me one gigantic fucking ravioli. What if you did that? Would you do it? I mean, I want a ravioli the size of the safety net under the Walenda's fucking tightrope. That's what I, I mean, just a, a big ass, but we can't call it ravioli because then people will be like, give me a ravioli and there's too many of those too big. Got to change the name. Uh, yeah. And they went through all the vowels too. They were like, raviola. Eh, I don't like it. Ravioli? No, because the E is too much like the I. And hmm, Raviolu? Raviolu? That's not so bad. By the way, that's the club that fucking Ricky owned. When he he, actually, he opened an Italian restaurant alongside the nightclub. He had the club Babalu. Next door, he had the club Ravi- <laughs> Raviolu. Uh, Raviolu? Ah, all right. So, uh, and then he got to finally. He was like, and then he, then, then he went. He tried Raviolu. Why? And they were like, uh, only sometimes. Why? And he's like, all right. Hmm. 
uh, what about raviolo? Does that make? And everybody went ding. And somebody went, whose pussy's getting eaten? And they went, no, no, no. That just means we're excited about this new plan to fuck up the ravioli business. You know what? Let's talk to John. Let's go talk to Tony Ravioli and tell him he's fucked because Giuseppe Raviolo's in town and he's about to clean up in the cheese filled noodle arena. God damn it. And uh, and sure enough, they invented they went ahead and they told all their chefs. They're like, you know, look, you make the pillowy raviolis and that's fine. The tortellinis, whatever the fuck. Or Chieta looks like an ear. We get it. There's the corkscrews, fusilli. We know all this, but... Here's what you need to do. You need to take a fucking baseball tarp. That's right. Pretend it's raining in the kitchen and just pull out a goddamn baseball tarp and fill it with mozzarella and ricotta. Could you do that for me? And then fold it in on itself and stamp the sides with a fork and cook the shit out of it like Uncle Buck making pancakes. Can you do that for me? I, I mean, I know that sounds big, but I don't give a fuck. And you know what? If you, if you want to fit it on a plate, here's what you do. Just just take an oven mitt. Get a noodle and turn it into an oven mitt and stuff it to the gills with fucking Parmesan. And I will eat the fuck out of it. Watch me. Watch me eat this raviolo. And uh, and there's other people. And they didn't. You know what? They didn't tell anybody. They didn't even put it on the menu. It was just one of those quiet things like the Earl of Sandwich. Who that, that guy's a fucking dick, by the way. He's playing cards. He's like, hey, man, make me a sandwich. They're like, uh, that's you. And he's like, yeah, make me my favorite thing. And they're like, we don't know what your fucking favorite thing is. You're just here to play cards. He goes, fuck you. Bring me some bread. So they bring him some bread. And he's like, all right, bring me some meat. And they're like, what kind of meat? And he's like, perchance, do you have mutton? And they're like, of course we have mutton. It's the fuck. It's a uh, high end card house. Why wouldn't we have goddamn mutton? And, and this tradition continues today. If you go play in a poker room or you play in some sort of pie gauss center in Las Vegas, just clap your hands and call for mutton and they bring it to you. God damn it. There's a plate of fucking mutton right there. And they bring you bread stacked up like a goddamn pile of cards, like a pile of playing cards. That's how the Earl of Sandwich did it. And that's how you can do it, too. But what a jag off, right? Earl of Sandwich is playing at some dude's house or whatever the fuck. And he's like, bring me some bread. And they're like, all right. And they bring him some bread. And then he's like, ah, mutton per chance. They bring that to him. And he's like, do you have a spicy sauce of some sort? And they're like, I don't know. We got this fucking ground up like mustard. It's yellow. Yes. Earl of Sandwich just pours it all over his mutton, puts it on his goddamn thing, and he eats it. And everybody's like, fucking sandwich. What's wrong with you, man? And he's like, I'm starving. And, uh, and then from that point on, they were like, this is the goddamn sandwich. Uh, and so, but it was still quiet. Like never, like, cause sometimes here's what the thing. Nobody could say it except for the Earl of Sandwich. Did you know this is totally true? He would go to play cards and he would be like, bring me my sandwich. And they'd bring it to him and he'd prepare it. And everybody'd be like, what the fuck? We want some of that. So when they would go to the tables, nobody could say sandwich because he was such a good card player. He demanded you not utter his name. And also he's an Earl. I mean, the Earl's fuck. They don't fuck around. They'll have you put to death. Let me tell you this. If you're an old timey card player and you're like, hey, man, what's up, Earl of Sandwich? And he's like, fuck you. And he cuts off your right hand. What, are you going to play poker with left hand forever? No, you're fucking doomed. No more can you play cards because also they think you cut your, you got your hand cut off for cheating, but you really didn't. You just said Earl of Sandwich out loud. So you got to keep it quiet. So he was like, hey, bring me my sandwich. And they did. And everybody's like, whoa, that looks delicious. Can we have one of him? Because you couldn't say it out loud yet, but you knew that was his name anyway. So they'd be like, hey, bring me one of him. And so they did. They brought you just they brought you the fixins and you made a sandwich and eventually it caught on because then when he died, nobody was around to fucking enforce his douchey rule that nobody could say his fucking name in the card room. So then everybody's like, bring me a sandwich. And I tell you what, to this day, they fucking if you do it like that, they will laugh uproariously because they remember exactly what it was like when he fucking ordered it. Oh, bring me a sandwich. And everybody's like, what the fuck, man? Uh, but now they laugh. Oh, ho, 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 ho. hilarious. That is a hilarious Earl of Sandwich impression. Bring us our mutton. And then the mutton comes and you fucking just and, and now again, also back then, dude, what was it like fucking 1750 when this fuckhead's ordering sandwiches or whatever the fuck. So, you know, that meat's being kept in some underground fucking wrap They're, They wrapped it in like pine leaves. Do pines have leaves? I don't think they do. But pine needles, whatever the fuck branches. I don't give a fuck. Whatever they did with this meat, they wrapped it up and kept it underground in a salt crust. And the bread had mold on it, but he didn't give a fuck. Because, again, back then, they hadn't even discovered penicillin yet. So they were like, oh, eat the mold. It's good medicine or whatever the fuck. You know who told them that? Earl of Sandwich is playing at the same table as Joe Medicine. Fucking Joe Medicine's fucking three tables away. The Duke of Medicine is right there with Earl Sandwich. Uh, Earl Sandwich and Joe Medicine. See, that doesn't sound as impressive, but if it's the Earl of Sandwich and the Duke of Medicine, well, then there you go. Then that's a couple of fellows you respect. Like if you if you put a if you put a preposition between my fucking first two names it'll be great. I'm the Mike of Schmidt, which is great. Uh, please, I, I pray to God that of is a preposition because if it's not, I'm gonna look so stupid when this comes out. But I'm not gonna check it. What if I did? What if I stopped down to check? Hold on a second. I'm gonna text my old English teacher, who's my friend on Facebook, and no, that isn't weird at all. 
I'm literally friends on my on Facebook with like two of my old teachers. And uh, and it makes no sense. I mean, they're lovely people. Certainly, they're wonderful people. Um, but one of them is like active. Like he, because uh, I told you, I got I got one friend who always puts up these polls and shit. Like I, he'll be like, "Hey guys, what's your favorite soup today?" And then like you'll get a hundred and fifty people who are like, "Yes, clam chowder, yes." And someone else will be like, "Oh no, beef bouillon, whatever the fuck, consomme, whatever." They all argue about it. Hey, <laughs> also, it'll be something as grim as, uh, hey, everyone, what's your favorite little Debbie cake? I like the Nutty Buddies. I like the Fudge Crunch, the Fudge Rounds, the Star Crunch, whatever the fuck. And everybody's like, yay. And then 15 minutes later, he'll post, oh, racism still exists. How do we feel about that? And then inevitably the same thing happens. People are like, I like the Nutty Buddies. <laughs> I like the Star Crunch. Shut up, dummies. That was another thing that I, I, it just, ah, God. All right, look, (laughs) what the fuck was there a thought? I was, I was trying to finish with the Earl of sandwich. I don't think there was. Oh, Raviolo Jones. So here's the deal. Fucking. So fucking, uh, the Tony, Tony Ravioli is pissed off because Giuseppe Raviolo comes along. So he, because Ravioli's corner of the market and it's on all the menus, but they will not allow Raviolo onto the menus. But if you're in the know, you can kind of give a wink to the fucking waiter, and you know what you do? You put your finger on your nose, like to the side, almost like a like a bewitched type of deal. You know how she tweaked her nose? But you put your finger on the side, which is, uh, if you ever know anything, that's how people know you're in the mob. They give you that finger on the nose thing, like, ha-ha, like, I'm, I'm, uh, I, I'm a part of this thing of ours, or whatever the fuck. He's a friend of ours, and you just do fucking finger on the nose. Well, that was originally done because Giuseppe Raviolo was banned from having raviolos on the menu, and if you wanted to have a big, gigantic, fuck-ton noodle cheese extravaganza, if you wanted to have a crazy-ass orgy, like, remember in the old fucking days when they did those commercials, and they're like, make up, like a fucking sketch, and someone would come in with a big powder puff and blast somebody in the face with a whole fucking jug of baby powder, and everybody would be like, ha-ha, hilarious. Well, then the raviolo is coming out man that's the size of a goddamn powder puff it's fucking huge you ever eat a fucking noodle stuffed with cheese the size of a goodyear fucking belted radial no you haven't you should step aside man go right now do the whisper and put the finger on the on the nose ting ting and everybody goes guess what giuseppe raviolo's in town and they fucking bring it out there it takes 10 guys to carry it they put it on the table the table is just you hear the table you ever heard wood scream (laughs) if you If you haven't, order a raviolo. Go to your favorite restaurant, finger on the nose, give the waiter a wink, and he comes out with Giuseppe Raviolo's fucking namesake, and it's 10 dudes who have to carry it. They put it on your fucking table, and you will hear wood scream if you've never heard it before. And now you're thinking to yourself, well, Mike, why, like what kind of wood screams? All of it, all of it, because it's got, it's bearing, it's bearing the weight of Giuseppe Raviolo's greatest invention. Which is, as we all know, a motherfucking beanbag chair noodle stuffed to the gills with ricotta, mozzarella, parmesan, any other fucking cheese they got laying around in that guy. Uh, what's the other one? What's the one I don't care for? Romano. Hey, Romano. You get that in there, too. It's all the cheeses. They don't give a fuck. I mean, again, it's it's a fucking, it's a gig, It's almost like, you know, you ever get a bra for your car? Yeah, okay, it's that. It's a bra for your car, but it's filled with cheese, and you got to eat it. Because you ordered it. Because you walked in and put your finger on your nose like a fucking smart pa- a smart fucking guy. I was going to say smart ass and smarty pants. And I got caught in the middle. But yeah, you sat down and they looked at you. They're like, hey, man, here's our menu. Would you like some of our scungili? And you're like, mm, I, you know, I don't know if I want any scungili. And they're like, what about the gaba gaba goo? And you're like, I don't know if I want the gaba gaba goo. And then they go, well, what do you want? And you just go, uh, finger on nose, bing, wink. And they're like, holy shit everything just got everything just got to see us because this man is here for Giuseppe Raviolo's goddamn secret namesake alert the chef and the 10 carriers of the Raviolo because they didn't you know the regular waiters don't bring it out no there are 10 designated men who bring out the Raviolo once you order it and they put it on your screaming table and they just say dive the fuck in and oftentimes, you know what I will do? And this, and this is totally true. And this would explain why I'm the fattest man on earth. Uh, they'll put down that gigantic raviolo on my table and the wood will scream. Oh, the wood will scream. And, uh, and I know I got to eat this fucking thing. But also, part of me doesn't like the eyes upon me. Because the whole restaurant is looking at me like, what the fuck? That guy ordered the raviolo? And it becomes a contest. I'm, again, I'm no Joey Chestnut. I can't just sit there and be like, ho, ho, watch me eat this raviolo, you fucking dicks. No. So what I do, and here's what I do. I cut open the raviolo long ways and then I climb in it like it's a tauntaun so I can stay warm and eat it from the inside out. 
I don't want prying eyes upon me as I eat piles of noodles and cheese. How dare you? I hide from those prying eyes. I, I go ahead and set up my goddamn Venetian noodle blinds and I eat the fuck out of the cheese on the inside and eat my way out and eat fucking noodles. And look, I know you're thinking to yourself, well, like, how long does this take? What well, depends on how fucking hungry you are. And my point is, if you don't think you're hungry enough to finish the raviolo in one sitting, don't order the fucking raviolo. Take that finger off thy nose and go ahead and order some fucking, I don't know, so get some calamari, you pussy. There you go. How about that? That's a good order. Ooh, why don't you order some, oh, I don't know, mastacholi. That's probably more your speed because you can't handle the man-sized fucking raviolo. That's a, how do you handle a hungry man, the raviolo. That's what you do. But instead, you're like, oh, I'll, I'll just have some angel hair. Yes, you will, you fucking lady. Good luck choking that shit down. You could be eating raviolo from the inside out like me. You could tunnel into a gigantic fucking gluten pod. And uh, which, by the way, say that in Germany to somebody when they say hi to you. Go gluten pod. And they'll be like, I think he said gluten tag. I'm not sure if he did, but you busted out a gluten, t- a gluten pod, which and this is totally true. When Hitler met Mussolini for the first time, Hitler said gluten tag Benito. And he said gluten pod Adolf and Adolf Hitler because he's stupid. He didn't even realize what was said. But you know who is not stupid? Himmler. And he's like, holy shit, that dude just said gluten pod. That sounds like a raviolo finger on the nose. Ding, ding. That's right. Himmler's a raviolo guy. Not that I care to be in bed with Himmler. Uh, but I certainly don't want to be in a fucking food pod with him either. Not enough room. That's a, that's a big ass raviolo. If you're going to fit me and Himmler in a noodle dish, you're going to have to think of a different one than the fucking raviolo. What could you possibly do? Again, you could bury us in a fucking sweat lodge full of spaghetti. Oh, look at me. That's how Native Americans do it. They go out there. They have a vision. They walk out, eat their way out and fucking eat their weight in noodles. That's what you want to do. Eat your fucking weight in spaghetti noodles. Go out. Here's your, here's the thing. Go find a guy with like a deer headdress. And, and who's got a, he's got a fucking, he, you know, his, his family owned this land. He lives on a reservation, whatever the fuck. This is a guy you need to respect. This is an Native American who deserves your fucking respect. And you go up to him and you go, look, here's what I want to do. I want to go out to a sweat lodge. I want to have a vision. I'm going to go on a vision quest right now. Almost like Jacob's ladder. I want to hide in a hyperbaric fucking one of those isolation chambers, but I want to do it in your sweat lodge. So we'll eat some peyote and then some ayahuasca. And then we'll fucking just ruin ourselves and clean everything out of our bodies as we sit there and we go on a fucking uh, uh, a native, a, a dream quest, a vision quest, whatever the fuck you want to call it. And then we will go ahead and fashion dream catchers out of whatever comes out of our body, whatever, whatever's left, whatever, whatever we cough up gets turned into a dream catcher. And then we will eat our weight in spaghetti noodles, mastacholi noodles, penne noodles, whatever the fuck you got while we're in there having our visions. Have the, the local ladies, the ladies of the, uh, of the reservation, the ladies of, of the, uh, the area, please have them make noodles that, and, and weigh it out. Let's, we have, before we get into the sweat lodge, oh, here, oh, dude, think of this. Hold on. Before we go into the sweat lodge, we weigh ourselves. Then we go into the sweat lodge, and then we fucking ayahuasca it up. We peyote the shit out of it. We fucking sit there, and we sweat. And, uh, and then, of course, we're going to lose 30 pounds each because we're having visions, and we're coughing things up and bad things are happening to us and we're sweating like motherfuckers. But we get to look forward to the fact that the noodles that we will eat after this fucking dream quest, this vision quest, this uh, whatever the fuck you want to call it. We, 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 uh, we walk out and we eat the noodles that are that way like our former selves. Oh, see, that's what I want to do. I want to go. I want to weigh in and go in and then lose a ton of weight and come out being like, hey, hey, look at me. I was just on a vision quest. They're like, exactly. Here's a pile of spaghetti that represents your former self. And I'm like, let me eat the fuck out of that right goddamn now. And I do a clean house. Me and uh, me and a guy named after a fucking deer. (laughs) Me and that guy. Me and a guy once shot a bear. Me and that guy are fucking going to work. And I'm just like a city pussy. There's no doubt about it. I show up at the fucking reservation. They're like, oh, man, didn't you steal our land? I'm like, well, it wasn't really me. It's a bunch of guys who look like me. Uh, but I'm here to make amends. So bring me to the sweat lodge. Let's have a vision. And maybe I can figure out something else to figure out and, and how to help all you motherfuckers. And then we'll eat a pile of noodles. They said, you're in. And they brought me in. And I went there and hung out with these guys. Uh, a bunch of guys named for eagles. And there's nothing wrong with that. Just a pile of eagle dudes. It's just me and a bunch of eagle dudes. And then they, they, they gave me an, uh, a Native American name. What could it possibly be? What could they name me? Uh, 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 humorous elk? What if I was humorous elk? <laughs> Hilarious yak? Who, who am I? I don't know. I mean, let's put it this way. I'm hoping to change my name after quarantine. Right now, I think humorous elk or hilarious yak 
might be might be okay. Uh, gut busting grizzly. I don't mind being that. I can be a bear. I eat like a bear. I eat stuff that's just fucking laying around. I can be that dude. Just put my face in the drink and pull out a salmon. I'm excited to do it. Uh, I'm going to drink some water now. <laughs> oh, I spilled water all over myself. God damn it. My mouth doesn't work. Like I said, quarantine. God damn it. I don't know what the fuck I'm going to do. So yeah, I talked about a fucking batting cage for fucking where you just pay 20 bucks to get in there and get your stroke back. Right. It's gotta be, there's gotta be some way to do that for pussy eating. God damn it. Not that I'm ever going to forget. You know what I mean? It's just, it's just, you just do it. Um, again, like I said, eating pussy, like riding a bicycle. Uh, but if, which by the way, I'm sure you've probably been thinking this since the beginning of the show, uh, never go on a bike ride with Mike <laughs> or let's, I take that the other way. Always go on a bike ride with Mike. Who knows? Uh, I, I don't, uh, I've tap dance as much as I can. I don't, cause look, man, I'm just trying, I'm just here. I'm, I'm just trying to be funny. I'm not even trying to be funny. I'm just me. And I don't want to talk about the fucking world, man. Cause the world is death. Everything's over fucking fucking. We're, we're so close to fuck neck. Just riding into town. Like the fucking Joker in a, in a, with a, with a blow up clown balloon over his fucking, I don't even know, dude. And, and, He's supposed to be going to fucking Wisconsin this week. And it's so funny. This shit happened in Kenosha. Now, I, I'm <laughs> I'm very familiar with Kenosha because that's where my grandparents lived on my father's side. That's where my father grew up. You know, he's from Chicago, but then they moved to Kenosha. And so when he was drunk, he'd go hide up at their house. And when we had to, like all the stories I've told you um, when I almost punched my grandpa in the face and stuff, those are in Kenosha. So I'll tell you what, I hear that this happens in Kenosha and I, I, I don't know a fucking thing about it. I just hear, you know dribs and drabs and i didn't want to fucking dive into the story i didn't know what the fuck was going on uh but then when i heard about it i'm like kenosha what the fuck that doesn't make any sense and because i live you know i was in kenosha and kenosha there was not a paved driveway in the fucking city when i was there it's rocks and i said that i even i was like man kenosha's just rocks on the driveway you walked outside and uh and you heard silence that was it this is truly this was a big day in fucking in in kenosha is you would go out and we'd play ball or whatever and then the, we'd see the mail guy driving his little mail car. And that for us, when we was little kids, we were like, oh, that's the coolest thing. He's got his own little buggy. It's so fucking awesome. And then we'd wait for him to get to our house. And we'd run out to the mailbox and we'd talk to him and he'd be very nice. And, uh, and we'd ask if he would hand us the mail and he'd say, well, no, it's part of my job. I have to put it in the box. And we'd say, okay. And then he'd put it in the box. He'd drive away and then we would open it up and take the mail. And then, of course, we'd wonder why the fuck he couldn't just hand us the mail in the first place. But we respected it because whatever. This is a guy who respected his goddamn job. So that's what fucking Kenosha was to me. It's this fucking fantasy land with my my horrible fucking probably dead now cousin, my grandpa who's certainly dead who I wanted to pop in the fucking shops, and uh, and my rude aunt. Like this is these are all the people and my dad going up there to drink and die. So Kenosha, as far as I'm concerned, burn that fucking place to the ground. Not a lot of great memories for me there, but people like I was thinking about it. I was trying to describe what was going on. I'm like, this is in Kenosha. There's like fucking there might be a thousand people in Kenosha. And then as I was talking, I went and Googled it and uh, I was off just a little bit um, because there are 100,000 people in Kenosha. And I was like, Jesus Christ, how the fuck are there 100,000 people in Kenosha? And then it dawned on me that all of my memories of Kenosha are from 45 years ago. So uh, here's here's a newsflash for everybody. Things will change over the course of several years, but 45 I'm not even sure if Kenosha's even in Wisconsin anymore. It might it might just be floating above it like a fucking District Nine spaceship. I got no fucking clue. Uh, but but you know, like, like I said, the Kenosha I knew was just filled with shitty grandparents, and now it turns out just like everybody else in the fucking world, it's filled with shitty cops. You're like, God damn it, and and and, and shitty people who want to fight in the street. And look, that fucking look. All right, you know how I feel. There's no point in in rampaging it. This ass fuck comes up from Antioch, Illinois, 17-year-old kid with an AR-15. He's already fucking too young to be carrying the stupid gun. And then they show him, this doughy motherfucker looks like a kid I went to school with named Art Gerard. And Art Gerard was on the fucking wrong end of a whole lot of wedgies and, and finger pointing and laughing when I was a kid. And I liked Art. Art was a good dude. But like older kids didn't take a shine to art because art, when we were in fucking Westview in in sixth grade and seventh grade, uh, Art Gerard looked like 
he was 37 years old and should be working in a fucking office somewhere because he just he had those gold wire rim glasses he had a, a big nose he had fucking a grown-ups haircut you know kind of like parted to the side and stuff and he just he just looked he, he he looked like a grown man masquerading as a child because he was, you know, and again, look, I have a ton of empathy for that now. At the time, he was just my buddy Art, but also we were like, Jesus, Art, what the fuck? You're going to stop growing at some point? You know, what the hell happened to you? But um, but now I look back and I'm like, man, that must have been fucking terrible for Art. You know, older kids would push him around and dump his books and shit like that because he looked, I, I had the same disease. Now, I tell you what, in Westview, I didn't have this disease. When I was a kid, I was a big fucking kid. So I still looked like a kid, but I was a big kid. So in Westview, I was funny, a wisecracker. I got along with everybody. Also, I was like the biggest kid in fucking sixth grade. So nobody fucked with me. Then I moved to Bolingbrook and I got, I finished out seventh grade at BJ Ward. And I got the shit kicked out of me by Glenn Gardner because I was a big kid who didn't know anybody. And then he decided he was going to fuck me up. And he did. Uh, and so I, uh, and, that, and now, now the Gerard was on the other art. I went to fucking Bolingbrook and got my shit kicked in, which is fucking not fun for anybody. So I, I turn on this thing in Kenosha and, and, and look, it started earlier in the week when, when there was a dude who got the whole thing got kicked off in Kenosha because fucking cops again shot a dude, um, shot him seven times in the back. His kids are in the van and, um, here's another thing I don't understand. I think there was five cops there. I don't know. I, I saw three at least. And uh, and they shoot this fucking guy because I because I've heard everything. They tased him. They didn't tase him. The taser malfunctioned. They told him to stop. They didn't tell him to stop. He said, I'm going to get my gun. He didn't say a word. They thought he might have a knife. There was a knife in the car. I mean, there's you. You don't know who to believe because they've already started the spin on both fucking sides. Everybody's like, well, he possibly, he had a knife. He did this. And also he was on trial because he might've done this and he's a possible rapist and all these other things. And, uh, that, that stuff was out within two hours of his fucking shooting because they know they have to fucking ratchet up the motherfucking smoke screen to do as much as they can to dilute everybody's opinions before they become emboldened in their beliefs. And and it's a foolish thing to do because already now you're not going to control the narrative. I mean, and also, let me say this to you. If he said, hey, man, I'm going to get my gun. If there is a knife in the car, if they did tase him, if any of this shit, if any of this is true, imagine if the worst case scenario is true. They fucking tasered him and he's the Hulk and he fought it off. And he said, Rawr, I'm going to get my gun. And they were right behind him. If you've seen the video, they're right behind him. Nobody tackles him. Nobody grabs him. Nobody impedes him. Nobody stops him from getting to the car. And then he's like, I'm going to go get my gun. And then he walks over. He opens the door of the car. And then they shoot him seven times in the back. Even if it's the worst case scenario that all of that is true. You still shot him seven fucking times and you shot him in the back. You know, go go watch any movie. I don't give a fuck if it's a Gary Cooper Western or a, or a Dirty Harry movie in the 70s or a Bruce Willis movie in the 80s or whoever the fuck your action star du jour is these days. Fucking, you know, you, you want to go with fucking The Rock, any of these guys. They don't shoot anybody in the fucking back. For hundreds of years, it's been the coward's way out. You don't put anything in a dude's back. You you face him. Even even fucking Jack Palance wanted Shane to pick up the gun. But you can't spin shooting a guy seven times in the fucking back. And I don't give a fuck if it's a black cop on a white guy. I don't give a fuck if it's a white cop on a white guy, a black cop on a black, whatever the fuck. It's wrong. It's fucking misery. But as usual, it's a white cop on a black guy. And here's another question. There's got to be, like I said, at least three cops there that I saw. There's probably more. These fucking cops, you you look at all this stuff that's going on in the streets in Portland. and, And look, Kenosha's a small place. I get it. But all these fucking police forces, they have everything short of a goddamn spaceship. A satellite, like a criminal hunting satellite, fucking everything. They got all this shit tricked out with fucking 
tanks and and ridiculous fucking ammo and and fucking I don't know eagle talon bullets and well all other every fucking thing you can imagine. But oh, none of these guys had body cams. Yeah, sorry about that. You know it's funny. That was the last thing I earned a list. You ever do that? You ever go to the grocery store and you got a list and you put everything on the belt and they ring it all up and uh, you only brought a hundred bucks and then you get to the hundred dollars and then, oh man, there's two six packs of beer that didn't ring up. And then you got to go, well, you know what? I don't need that cereal and I probably don't need that bread and I don't need these fucking Debbie cakes, nutty buddies, whatever the fuck. Let's just get the beer in there. We'll figure it out. Can we make this work? Uh, yeah, that's how it went for us. Like, you know, it's weird. We bought the, uh, we bought the robot that tells people to stop and drop and roll. We bought that. And, uh, oh, and we also bought uh, the bullets that when they hit skin, they emit a hydrochloric acid that not only burns the skin, but it starts to fry them from the inside. We bought that. It's experimental, but we went ahead and grabbed, uh, how many did we get of those? A million. Yes, we bought a million of the acid bullets because it just sounded like the thing to do. And uh, we bought a Death Star. I know that seems strange. We are just Kenosha, after all, and we're only one city. You would think maybe the state of Wisconsin would all go in, all of the police departments, and buy one Death Star. Well, get this. You're not going to believe this. Um, every police force in Wisconsin has their own Death Star. Yeah. And we felt a little left out, so we're like, all right, we need a Death Star. And uh, and once we got through paying for the Death Star, um, you know, then the la- the very next thing on the list was body cams for our officers and tasers that didn't malfunction when we tried to use them. And, uh, well, again, like I said, it's just like you're shopping for groceries. You got to decide what you need. And sometimes you need two six packs of beer. And sometimes you need a motherfucking Death Star for a local police department. So we couldn't possibly buy the one thing that shows whether or not we're doing our jobs correctly. Now, again, I'm a, I'm a fucking comedian. All right. I don't know what a, I, I don't know how to do a job that, that a cop would do correctly. I would like to think as a cop, if you get home at night safely, then you've done your job correctly. If you have done no harm and had no harm done to you, then you've done your job correctly. But I, I and this is just me. If my workday involves putting seven in a guy's back, if it involves me pulling the pulling the lever on a motherfucking nine millimeter slot machine and lining up three sevens and putting them in a guy's fucking spine, I think I've gone home. I, I gotta say, I got I go home and I look back and I go, did I do the right job today? Did I do a good job today? Uh, did I do the kind of job that I would be proud of somebody watching on my body cam if only? The chief hadn't bought that Death Star instead. But again, I'm not, everybody gives you the argument. You're not in the street. You've never been to down a dark alley. These guys do a hard job. Yes, I'm aware of that. I have friends who are cops. And, And I've heard the tales they've told me of fucking horrible shit they've gone through. But I also know that they want to help their communities. And I also know the guys that I know are good men. And, uh, I, I, and I know that they look upon what happened and just rolled their eyes and went, great, here we fucking go again. So I, I, this happens fucking again. They put seven in this guy's back. They put him down. No body cams. And within within an hour, this guy's fucking criminal record is on the out there. And they, they talk he's a rapist, he did this and that lady, and he yelled, and I'm gonna get a gun, and there's a knife, and all these fucking things. And and because that's their way of, of muddying the waters. That's their way of covering their ass. Because I'll tell you what, man. I I've heard the term justified shooting, and and I'm a civilian, so to me there is no such thing. But if some dude's coming at you and it's you or him, yeah, put him down. But if a dude is walking the fuck away from you and you put seven in his fucking back, that's just that that's just cowardly lion shit, right? There was a sketch on SCTV, John Candy, John Candy 
was a was a sheriff, and his name was Yellow Belly. <laughs> and you you get it clearly. He's walking around. And he's just terrified of everything. And a little kid comes up and he goes, "Hey, Yellow Belly!" And, and John Candy goes, hoo, hoo, and he shoots the kid dead in the street. And and I thought of it when I saw this fucking dude just put seven in a guy's back. I'm like, what are you doing? That that's just you just you're just squeezing. Now you're just fucking the Jesus from fucking Big Lebowski. Hey, let me tell you something. You'd go to your car and go try to talk to your kids. I'm going to fucking pull the trigger until the fucking gun goes click. And you did. So so that happened. And I don't, I don't know how these fucking police forces don't have body cams that work. I don't know how any of this shit. I do know how it happens. It's, it's, it's just still possible. And I, and I, when I look and I see what's going on and I don't know how to make sense of it and I see what's happening in the world, I, 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 you're tired of hearing it and I'm just fucking Steve laughs. You know what I mean? I'm just a fucking comedian. I mean, a second ago I was telling you that I was Wonder if I could do a story at Flappers in front of a shower curtain like fucking Bill Dwyer. Do I need to stand up to do my job or sit the fuck down? I don't know. I mean, a second ago, I was hiding in a fucking in a fucking raviolo as big as a tauntaun just to stay warm and eat cheese. So maybe I'm not the best guy to bring you street knowledge or tell you about what I saw or what I think. But you know what? My fucking show, my microphone. I, uh... I, I don't know. I, I just think it's all going to fall apart. And I'm, I'm not trying to terrify anybody. I'm not trying to school you or scare you. Uh, believe me, I have friends to the, to the left of me in that attitude. They think it's already over, you know, and I, I've felt that way somewhat. But you still cling to the possibility that there might be some sort of hope. And when I say hope, I don't even mean like fucking everything gets changed and fixed and everybody's happy because that shit's never going to fucking happen. I mean, we're, we're, we're just right now, we're just Brazil without fucking meat puzzles. That's all we are at this point. We've got our own version of favelas. Fuck. I was in Hawaii. There looked like they were favelas up and down the goddamn mountain. I mean, it's, it's this entire country is a shell game, man. I've made this analogy before, but this entire country now, you know, there's, it's this this shining example, it always has been. It's always been out there for people to see and for people to think and for people to dream on. They couldn't wait to get to America. They couldn't wait to be here. But they don't realize that the image portrayed is false. You know, they might be seeing our our movies and our pop culture and that sort of thing, but they're not they're not seeing the systemic rot that we've got going on and have had going on fucking forever. We're no better politically or or uh, i mean we we are <laughs> let me say this you know uh i never once had to consider the fact that the united states may have to undergo a junta i didn't this wasn't junta town i thought fucking you know if you wanted to if you told me they had a junta in cambodia i'd say okay great jello biafra write a fucking song about it if you told me that you're gonna have a junta in ecuador i'd go of course you are it's fucking ecuador you can't start a country with a vowel you know and it's like that shit's gonna happen and, I, and, I, and now that I think about the United States of America, probably not the best analogy, but still. Uh, but juntas were the exclusive property of people that were not America. There was no there was no possibility of a junta here. And now all I consider in my brain is like, man, this is hunt. We are ripe for a junta. This entire fucking area is ripe for a goddamn junta. And and people on the outside looking in see it now. They know it. They can feel it. We are no longer the shining example. We are no longer the the destination that people dream on to come here and try to have a better life or to establish something for themselves that they can't do in in whatever dirt poor crime ridden uh monstrous fucking situation they found themselves in anywhere. And I'm not casting aspersions on entire countries. I'm saying that all countries have sections where people are dirt poor and there is crime rampant and they are being fucking held down. And they've always been taught that America was the place to go was America was the place you can go because land of the free home of the motherfucking brave. And, uh, look, I still think there are some brave people here. I'm just not so sure how free we are. 
since I can't get in a car and go to Canada anymore. The people who were coming here from, from Guatemala or from Mexico or, or people who were trying to come here and have better lives, because again, this was always the, the you know, to, to quote Reagan, the shining city on the hill. But now these people, they have to, they have to look at us and they, they laugh. They used to want to come here because we led the way for the world in, in freedom and democracy. And we were the example that had been set. And now I, I, I don't know why people want to come here. I mean, they, I look, obviously it's better than, than where they are. So clearly they want to come here for the possibility of freedom. But when you hear what's being done to people, when they try to come to this country, it's, it's, it shows you how desperate they are, that they're willing to take the chance. But the very fact that there's even one scintilla, one shadow of doubt in the head of any immigrant who tries to come here. The very fact that any one of them would think to themselves, well, maybe this isn't a good idea is so completely against everything America has been and is supposed to be. I've, I look, we're not the, we're not, we're not the country in the song. Okay. The national anthem or America, the beautiful, we, yes, some of that can be taken seriously, but you look around, you see, see black people constantly having to fight to be recognized as humans. You see immigrants being torn apart, families being fucking sent here and there. And, and I see an 80 truck fucking Trump extravaganza marching through my fucking street, rooting for this fuckhead like he's a goddamn Premier League team. Like, like he's your favorite hockey team or your favorite NFL team. It's not, it's fucking crazy, man. It's crazy. We used to be the ideal in the world. We led the way. America used to be, when, when, when immigrants would talk, I'm sure they would talk back and forth about, we've got to get to America. We need to get to America. That's where we need to be. America used to be a finish line. Now America's a punchline. I see what happened in Wisconsin and... and you know, that guy put seven in that dude's back and then you just, you literally, you know, what's coming next. You know, that people are going to take to the streets and you know, the people are going to march and they're going to, they're going to do what they can to, to vent and to be heard. They need to be heard. These people, how are they still not being heard? It seemed like it was working in some places for a while, but then of course now it's their, their fuck neck is ginning up an opposition party that's that's taking to the streets to quote unquote protect property or whatever the fuck they think because again when you start you start acting like statues have value over human life then you empower 17 year old doughy fat art gerards to grab the air 15s and fucking cross state lines to shoot strangers in the name of saving a fucking window display at a circle fucking k you're giving these people the green light to fucking murder people. Is rioting bad? Yes. Is burning and looting buildings bad? Yes. Do I understand why people who have been stepped on for fucking centuries are doing anything they can to be seen and heard? Fuck yes. That kid didn't even have the fucking claim of being from Kenosha and defending his hometown. He's just out there playing fucking soldier. There's clips of him. Like he, there was something where he's like, oh, yeah, there are two clicks that way. Or he's doing, he's doing like hand signals, like five and turning. And, and I'm like, what are you doing? You saw that fat fuck that GI doe. Go have some pizza. You're 17. Go, go ask somebody to fucking junior prom and hope you can finger blast her later. Your, your finger should be in a high school junior, not around a fucking trigger. But these fuckheads, man, this, this kid just goes and, and again, this is another story that you, 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 they shoot, 
he shoots a guy in the head and then people chase him down and then he shoots another guy in the stomach, shoots a guy in the arm. Then he gets to go home because the cops say he was a citizen soldier and there was a shooting involved. Like, I, I mean, it's so fucking predictable. Like, can't you understand why people are mad? Can't you understand why people are fire? You fight people firebomb government buildings for two months. All right. Uh, whatever the fuck they protest peacefully as well. All right. There are pe- peaceful protests all over the fucking place in L.A. We still have them every goddamn day. Portland, Seattle, fucking everywhere. They were doing it in Germany and France were for Black Lives Matter. And now this fucking butterball, this this fucking wannabe Blackwater mercenary fuck, 17 years old with thick fucking black frame glasses, goes to play fucking soldier and shoot somebody in the fucking head because he thinks he lives in Call of Duty. And you know that people are going to lose their minds. You know people that are going to start. There's going to be violence. There's going to be protests. They let that fucking kid go home. They let him go home. That's the thing. For months now, people have been saying, you don't hear us. And then this fuckhead takes it into his own fucking fat hands to shoot somebody and lay him the fuck out, kill two people. And then they let him go home. Just like they bought Burger King for the fucking kid in South Carolina. Just like the dude who shot up the Dark Knight Theater got got taken in alive. I've seen clips now of, of like a, a white dude tackling a cop in a grocery store and they wrestled. And then the cop was like, hey, don't, re- don't resist, sir, don't resist. It's like, what the fuck? Shoot him. Shoot him in the fucking head. You see a guy getting, he's out of his truck and he's a cop saying, you better relax. And the guy's like, fuck you, I'm leaving. Fuck you, I'm fucking leaving. And the fucking guy gets in his truck and drives away. And they don't do anything because he's a white dude. So for whatever protests have gone on the past couple months, people are not being fucking heard. And that leads me to conclude that people will never be heard. Which then leads me to wonder what the fuck is going to happen. I told you I vacillated back and forth. Ah, man, I got to move. Canada, Ireland, I got to get out of here, anywhere, somewhere, whatever. And then I had the epiphany, what was it, six weeks ago, a month ago, where I was like, I love California. I love being here. I don't want to fucking go anywhere. This is my home. My friends are here. I don't, I don't want to go, but it's, it's just, (laughs) it's just getting worse, man. And again, I'm a 53 year old white guy. Okay, this isn't this isn't touching my life yet, except for the fact that I have extreme empathy for the people whose lives it is destroying, for the people whose lives it is affecting, for the people it is touching, people that are close to me, people that are friends with me, people I know, and I want to help them. I want to make things easier. I'd love to make this country a better place for them to live. I would love for everybody to truly be looked upon as equals. That would be great. I just got to tell you, when I see 80 trucks with fuckheads flying Trump flags and yelling and screaming at everybody in the fucking street and calling them pussies and liberal assholes and lib tears and libtards and, and, and seeing that shit happen and not understanding why people are sad or mad or upset, then I don't know what to say. I don't know what's going to happen. I truly don't. And as I said, I'm, I'm a 53-year-old white dude. And fuck all of you who are out there shooting people and fucking around. Because you know what? Yeah, overall, this inconveniences me more than anybody else. I, I'm not going to lie to you. I'm 53. My life is two-thirds over. I was hoping to run clock the rest of my fucking life and take a knee and be finished with this fucking stuff. I wanted to eat cool food and 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 meet someone to love and travel the fucking world and go see cool places and do whatever or i wanted to just go to a quiet house somewhere in a in the woods or in a fucking neighborhood or anything and just and just live the life everyone wants to live black white hispanic asian native american Eskimo, Pacific Islander, whoever the fuck you are, you want to have the privilege of being left alone to live a normal life. And every day in this ridiculous fucking battleground of a country, I see the hopes and dreams of people who want to live a normal life slipping away. 
And I will tell you this, I am viewing this through the prism of social media. So that's warped because you'll see people who are saying, oh my God, DC has been destroyed. It's a battleground. Portland is fucking leveled. It's on fire. Unbelievable. Kenosha is fucking ruined. New York is a fucking hell hole um, because they're trying to scare you. It's an electric year. Election. It's an electric year, certainly, but it's also an election year. And they're trying to spook you into thinking that the inner cities are bad and the people in the suburbs need to vote for law and order and strength and Trump and fucking fascist nonsense. Well, I have friends in D.C. I have friends in Portland. I have friends in Seattle. And, uh, and, and they've told me this is all ridiculous. It might be a two-block radius that all this shit happens every night. Still doesn't make it good or right, but the city's not on fire. Protesters aren't coming to people's houses and dragging them out. None of this shit is happening. But the news is invested in a horse race. And, and the Republicans are doing everything they fucking can to steal another election. And I, if you think that's hyperbole, they've stolen three of the last four, quite frankly. Um, is that true? Three of the last six? <laughs> Look, this is the dangers of talking at the speed of your head. I, I don't know what to think. Because, you know, this kid shoots these people in fucking Kenosha. And then there's a, uh, the next day, social media goes crazy. They're making this kid a fucking hero. Someone tweeted, I want, uh, what the fuck is his name? Kyle Rittenhouse to be my bodyguard. And Ann Coulter retweeted and said, I want Kyle Rittenhouse to be my president. Why? Because this fat fuck gunned down three people on a street? You want a strong man? You want a fascist? You want somebody who will solve shit with guns? But here's the worst part. And again, I've said this to you before. Whatever's fucking happening in this country, whatever's falling apart, it's terrible and it's tough to deal with. But for me, the exhausting thing is the gaslighting and the lying that accompanies it. When they, they are blatantly stealing and doing things that are terrible and ruining things and, and just saying they won't answer subpoenas and basically laughing and saying, fuck you, and all the stuff we were told, all the bullshit we were taught in school about checks and balances and, and courts of law and everybody making sure bad things didn't happen and patriotism and America, it's, it's all garbage. It's all out the fucking window. Because these people are stealing shit with both fucking hands. And it's put lie to the idea that anything will ever get better. And I, I, I don't know what's to come. I truly don't. I wish I did. I wish I could laugh and joke uh, and have fun. Uh, but again, the the people that are saying that this kid's a hero, the people that are, that lionize. There was there was someone who said on Twitter, and he said it best. He said uh, the fact that it, it didn't even take twelve hours for the right to try to lionize Kyle Rittenhouse and paint him as some kind of hero may be the most ominous development yet. And that's completely true, because if you can't see that what he did was wrong, everybody's like, oh, self-defense. Oh, he's how does he know? He's, he's just saving people. He's the streets. He's key. Tucker Carlson. Oh, my God. He's you know, if you if the cops won't do their job, how can you not expect people to good people to go down and protect property? And oh, my God, stop. Stop it all. I wish there was a spigot where you could turn it off because it's all just this endless flow of garbage. And like I said, it's my own fault for paying attention to it on Twitter or on Facebook. And, and I, I actually, I, I unfriended like 10 people last week, not people I interact with, but just, you know, I usually just accept friend requests if they're real people. Cause I don't know if they listen to the show, but then there are people who I grew up with and I just cut, I cut like a dozen of them loose last week because 
my friend posted, you know, again about, oh, Jesus, they're shooting Kenosha. What's going on over there, man? And these people came in and they all started explaining why it was okay. They started explaining why the cops shot the guy seven times. They started explaining why the kid in the street shot three people. And and they bust out their fucking slide rule. And they will give you every single angle they can possibly think of to make sure you understand why the white guy was right and the black guy was wrong. But they never do it for the black guy. They never have the slide rule. They never explain, you know, when a, when a cop shoots a guy seven times in the back, well, it's a scary job. You don't know how to do that job. And he's just trying to stay safe. And they didn't listen to him. And he didn't cooperate. And did you know he's a rapist? That's, that's what it always gets down to. Hey, did you know that she was gang raped by five guys? Well, yeah, but I saw her that night and she might've had a beer. I think she had a beer and then she had a dress that went above her knee. Oh my God. You don't go to the barn dance and have half a beer and wear a skirt above your knee. If you're not waiting to get fucking spit roasted by five frat boys, that's the fucking real deal. People are just waiting to excuse the bad behavior on their side of the argument. And there are some on the other side too. People are saying it's, it's, it's okay to loot or burn buildings and all that. Look again, uh, I'm not, I'm not sitting here being like, I'm a loot guy or a burning guy. I am. However, uh, a guy who understands why when you're not being heard, you have to do everything you can to be as loud as you can. And, They've been trying it now for three months and a guy still gets shot seven times in the back and a white dude shoots somebody three times or th- shoots three different people and and everyone defends the, the cop and the white shooter. Again, like I said, this kid was 17 and you saw him and he looks scared out of his mind playing grown-up Call of Duty motherfucker and in reality, if if the other proud boy, alt-right, Trump fucking barbed wire tattoo assholes were in the same high school as that fucking kid, he wouldn't have been able to shoot anybody because he'd still be in a fucking locker. And that's, that's why he's on the street with a gun. Because it makes him tougher. It makes him a bigger man. He's been indoctrinated into fucking hating black people or being scared of them more likely and doing whatever he can to try to find a a place to belong. And look, that's going to get into a whole other fucking area of the lost boys of this country who were raised without fathers and therefore have an inherent hatred for women because their mothers were the sole authority in their lives. And so they have to rebel against it, which leads to them rebelling against all women, which leads to them finding like-minded kids and just wanting to do as much damage to this world as they can because they think they've been dealt a fucking losing hand. But that's for another time. And believe me, as long as this show continues, I'm sure we'll have plenty of time to get to that subject in the future, if not next fucking week. You guys can get me at Mike at MikeSchmidtComedy.com. You guys can be my friend at Facebook.com slash the 40-year-old boy. You can find me at Twitter.com slash the 40-year-old boy and follow me there. Why wouldn't you? I'm, I'm worth a follow. I'm worth following. I got a great Twitter ass. Don't you want to feast your eyes on my Twitter ass and follow it? I want you going boom, boom, ba, boom, boom, ba, wow, ba, wow, wow, soup bowl trombone. I'm also on Instagram and Snapchat at Mike40YOB, Mike40YOB. I haven't posted anything on Instagram. You know, I'll post an Instagram thing today. That's right. I haven't posted anything in a while, but I'll do it soon. Not right. What if I did it right now? What if I did it while I was talking to you guys? That'll never happen. Uh, cause I'm, I have to concentrate on talking as it is, uh, but Instagram and Snapchat, I'm Mike four zero Y O B find me on there and, and follow me and love me and tell me I'm the best because I am, uh, our good friend, Ryan Dirks does the web stuff. You know what? He actually wrote me this week and I still owe him a text, but I'll get a hold of him. Ryan Dirks. You can find him at facebook.com slash Ryan Dirks. Uh, our buddy KC helps with the YouTube stuff. Thank you so much, KC. I appreciate you doing that. And, of course, our great and powerful friend, David Mex Hernandez, who does all of the cool-ass music and artwork for this show. You can find him 
at facebook.com slash David Mex Hernandez and be his pal, his friend, his confidant, if you, if you will reach out and see if he'll go that route with you. Probably won't, but it's not worth, uh, it's not worth not trying. Reach out to the man. Uh, put your hand in the hand of the man who draws the cool stuff. Put your hand in the hand of the man who picks that guitar. All right. Uh, that's our friend, David Mexer Hernandez. Well, that wasn't, that's me uh, ruining everything, but still David exists. Be his friend at facebook.com slash David Mex Hernandez. And, uh, and tell him you love him and what he does. He'd love to hear it. Now, while you're there, you can go into his photos and look at the artwork he's done for this show. He, uh, he used to do all the, uh, the, the individual Facebook, whatever cover photos. No, not the cover. The, I don't know what they're called. Whatever my fucking, oh, caricature, whatever the fuck. He used to do a ton of artwork for that. You can find it in a folder on his page. He still does all of the, uh, the fucking timeline stuff, which is pretty cool. He finds a quote from the show. Here's my favorite thing. He, uh, he gave me one this week where it was like, you ever eat a lemon at knife point? Nah, fuck. Who the fuck's ever eaten a lemon at knife point? Whatever the fuck I said on the show. So he painted that. And uh, a girl I went to school with who like, she knows my brother really well, but she doesn't know me, but she just wrote, I don't get it. <laughs> And I, I just, I have to laugh when she wrote it. Like part of me was going to write her back and just go, Oh look, I have a show. And sometimes I say a lot of dumb shit like this. Um, but would that explain it really? I mean, would that even go any further explaining it than if I just left it there and let her ponder it for the rest of her goddamn life? You ever read a lemon at knife point? Of course not. Nobody's got a fucking lemon at knife point. Who did that? I don't get it. Well, Google it or write me personally and go, Hey, I don't, what is this quote? I'll answer it. But in a public place, I don't get it. Well, I, that could be, I don't know, because you got a dent in your head the size of a fucking ashtray, you fucking nobody. Uh, or you're just a lovely person who doesn't understand about eating lemons at knife point. Look, I, if there's edged weapons and citrus involved, I can't expect you to parse this puzzle and figure it out. I haven't seen you in 35 years, Cheryl. Uh, <laughs> how mean is it to name checker and call her out? All right. Cause it just made me laugh. I don't get it. So what? Who gives a fuck what you get? I don't give a fuck what you get. Jesus Christ. Oh, oh, you don't get it. Well, here, here's the thing. It all started 12 years ago. That's right. A dozen years ago when I started doing a comedy show and I was being funny off the top of my head and it all, all roads led to this intersection where I talked about lemons and knives, right? And now I said it and now it's been painted by a genius and now yeah, I don't get it. I don't give a fuck, man. Why don't you suck on a lemon and stab yourself with a knife? Maybe then you'll get it. <laughs> All right. Uh, so David painted this awesome Facebook thing and he does it all the time. You can be his friend at facebook.com slash David Max Hernandez. Go ahead and look through all of his uh, paintings that he does uh, for, for this show, certainly. And then also when you're his friend, you can join his cult. What? The man has a cult. He does. It's called, this is dumb. That's dumb. You're dumb. I'm dumb. And uh, he's, he's painting all sorts of Jesuses. He's making memes. He's doing amazing things with people and people are loving him back. He's sending out smites. Uh, he's putting up pictures of Tom Jones. He's doing, he's doing all the things that people like. Literally, he, he actually had a focus group. He sat them down. He said, what do you, what do you, said, what do you guys like? And they said, is there a way you could name a guy Slumpus McGrumpus? He's like, probably. They said, we need pictures of Tom Jones and possibly Ann Margaret half nude, or at least somebody who looks like Ann Margaret. And he said, all right. They said, do you have a refrigerator that has red hair? He said, done. I can make that happen. Uh, and then sure enough, there's a uh, uh, big cock McGroovy and whoever the fuck else is there. Or is that? No, that's from another plug. I'll get that out later. But whatever. He's got all these amazing characters because, again, his focus group told him to do those things. And that's what he does. He likes to please. And he will do work for you if you want to reach out to the man, the man. And I think you should. Facebook.com slash David Mex Hernandez. Like I said, the cult is this is dumb. That's dumb. You're dumb. I'm dumb. You can join the cult. Uh, and then he will send you questions to answer. And then when you answer them, look at you. You're in the cult and you're doing cool ass stuff and looking at all of his artwork. It's fucking lovely, man. The guy does a great job. So you'll check that out. Right. And then uh, you can go and check out his other stuff. Like if you go to the West Side 86 Jokers page, that's uh that's my fan club page. Hi, that's right. I have a fan club. Earlier in the show, I was talking about eating a raviolo from the inside out, cutting it open and climbing inside. And yet, and yet, and yet, I have a fan club. Earlier in the show, I equated Marlon Brando uh, raping that chick in that movie with Augustus Gloop and both of them getting caught in the chocolate pipe. 
butter and chocolate and every other goddamn thing. And yet, and yet I have a fan club. I, I dare say this. The reason I have a fan club is very much for the reasons that I just stated to you that I say things like that. You know why I have a fan club? Because there are people out there who do get it. Go find David, facebook.com slash David Mex Hernandez. Have I mentioned his unbelievable cult? I think I have, but get this. You're not going to believe this. The man uh, has a podcast. Do you know what podcasts are? Podcasts are these, uh, it's almost like radio you can take with you and start it whenever you want. The man has a podcast called The Flem Cat Podcast, P-H-L-E-G-M. It's available for your listening pleasure. You must peruse it. You must listen. You must download. You must love it. You must subscribe. It's available in the Apple Podcast space. It's available in all sorts of places where you get podcasts. I think Podbean is one of those. I think uh, Shitster. I think that's a podcast host. Uh, Wherever you could get your podcasts, anywhere, Spotify, I would imagine, anywhere you get your podcasts, anywhere you go ahead and download them and keep them for your own safekeeping, you will find the unbelievable, the Flem Cat podcast available right now, P-H-L-E-G-M. It's our buddy David doing music, doing voices, uh, dispensing anecdotes, almost drowning. All of those things are involved. So why wouldn't you go ahead and download it right now? The Flem Cat Podcast, available now in all of your favorite podcast areas. All the nooks, all the crannies. You can go ahead and find them right there. Cut open a raviolo. You might find a podcast in there. Order a big fucking raviolo. Ten dudes come out. Put it on your screaming table. Slice it open. Boom. There's a Flem Cat Podcast right in there waiting for you. Go ahead and go ahead and listen to the goddamn thing. Uh, and also David, like I said, he does all this amazing artwork for me, but if you want him to do artwork for you, what is that possible? It is the man's a Renaissance man. He can do these goddamn things. Like I said, you're going to go to my page and look at the artwork he's done for me. You're going to go to his page, facebook.com slash David Max Hernandez. See all the artwork he's done for the cult. See the stuff he's done for me. Go to the West Side 86 Jokers fan club page. See the artwork he's done for the fan club. And you're going to think to yourself, God damn, I want something like this for me. Whether it's a crazed joker whether you want a painting of little Schmitty or whether you want a painting of someone you love to hang in your foyer and celebrate your wedding day or the very fact that you have somebody in your life that's special, he can do that for you. How, you ask? Well, you contact the fucking guy. First, become his friend at facebook.com slash David Max Hernandez. Look at his artwork. Think of what you'd want. But also, you can go to his website. That's right. If you go to the website, you'll see a whole other world of artwork he's created in a different style. It's available for you to peruse right now. I say you go. Art by DMH.com. That's A R T Y B. No, it's not. A R T B Y. There you go. Hold on. Let me try that again. Art by DMH.com. That's A R T B Y D M H. Dot com. Share with 
with them The beautiful one The guy in my phone is fun He'll bat his eye And then he'll cry In photo 31 Yes, of course we have them. I, I, I shocked, aren't you? Aren't are you are you finding yourself reeling from that information? Inexplicably, there are still people who want to support this show monetarily, even though I talked about hiding in a raviolo earlier. Even even though I talked about a pussy eating game show where I had to make the woman say ding ding or we haven't won. Even though I said my face smells like chocolate and butter all the time, these people are still lining up. That seems like an aggressive way to say it. There's still a couple of people who throw some shekels my way who say to themselves, hey, man, we ought to help this guy in his show, uh, mainly by having him talk about our show. Who are those people? Well, let's talk about them right now. Our good friend, nay, our great friend, Fearful Jesuit over there at the Paranoid Strain podcast. Well, yes, it's available now. Uh, there's a new episode where you can listen to uh, basically a repurposing of the first episode with some new stuff and an interview and all sorts of cool ass stuff that you should listen to today, this minute, right now. Well, wait till I'm finished. Don't go ahead and leave me in a lurch. I refuse to be in a lurch. <laughs> I can't do lurch. Lurch's voice is too deep. Um, here's that video where it's lurch and the fucking spider girl just dancing. What's her name? I don't know. Morticia's the mom. Uh, Pugsley? No, it's the fat kid. Yeah, that's, that's the kid from Kenosha. Pugsley, you fuck. Pugsley with the air 15 fucking people up like a dumbass. He almost got beat up with a skateboard. All right. Um, who's Pugsley's sister? It's Christina Ricci. We all know this. There's, that can't be denied. But there's the uh, video from the old uh, TV show. Somebody took it and they put like a song to it. And it's Lurch just fucking doing the get down, just fucking spanking it out with the goddamn daughter. And they're doing this little slidey dance, their little slidey feet all over the slidey house of the fucking Adams family house. I think Cousin It might be snapping along as well in his box. Uh, no, that's Thing. Thing is in the box. Cousin It is just a fucking mop with a hat on. Uh, literally, just a fucking cat's hairball that just got coughed up and put on a trilby. That's what Cousin It is, baby. <clears throat> but I forget the video. I don't even know the song. And I think they probably used multiple songs. How can I not remember this fucking girl's name? I'm, I'm literally talking in circles about the Adams Family now, which again is another reference that nobody else should ever fucking get. I got Noah's Ark earlier because I'm in the oldest. But any young person, anybody under the age of 30 is just like, who the fuck are the Adams Family? Although, wait, didn't they just put it out this year? Yeah, there was like a fucking cartoon of it or some bullshit that nobody saw because the germ came. Thank God, right? You know, you, you think there isn't good news with COVID? I got news for you right now. It kept the fucking Adams Family cartoon movie from making a dime one because nobody wants to fucking see that garbage again. Quit repurposing old, old things for, for new people. Nobody wants to see that stuff. Least of all me, God damn it. And I'll tell you what, I speak for me. I speak for me. I speak for the trees because uh, there's unrest in the forest. You've heard about that. Why is that always my go-to? Uh, there is trouble with the trees, for the maples want more sunlight and the oaks. Ignore their pleas. Yes, that's right. I'm going to get a copyright fucking thing. I always get them anyway because of Mex's music. But eventually, I, you know what? Actually, I'll be really happy if I get a copyright slam from some fuckhead who's just like, yeah, this guy sang part of the trees by Rush. Geddy Lee was very disappointed. <laughs> I'll consider I'll, it'll be a heroic day in my life if that happens. Um, 
Getting back to the Paranoid Strain podcast, which does not feature Getty Lee, as far as I know, it's available right now for you to download in all podcast spaces. Our good friend Fearful Jesuit, our good friend Dana Unicorn, teaming up to bring you conspiracy theories and tear them apart. Uh, the things that I believe are going to eat the world he finds hilarious and entertaining, and uh, I just can't have the stomach for it. Uh, but the only time I can stomach conspiracy theories is when our good friend, uh, Fearful Jesuit, has them out on the uh, on the operating table and he's doing the autopsy on them when he's cutting them open, alien autopsy style. And he shows me a quivering QAnon liver and he says, ha ha, see, it's just like you and me. It's not it's not a snake that's going to eat the whole world. It's just a man. It's, it's and to serve man is the book you use when you chop it up. All right. Never mind. Um, he's our guy. He's our friend. He's the best. He's a podcast host. He's a hero to some, a villain to others. He's a shapeshifter. <laughs> The Paranoid Strain is a podcast that you will love. If you go download it right now, like I said, from all of your finer podcast houses, but especially in the Apple podcast space, because then you can leave a review that tells them that you love the show, that you love me. Like, that's right. It's about me. Go ahead and mention me. Throw me in the fucking narrative. Why not? I think you should. Uh, and then if you want to write him a note, you can. Here's his email address. The Paranoid Strain at gmail.com. The Paranoid Strain at gmail.com. He's there waiting for your letter. Tap it out. Get, get, uh, what's that weird Morse code thing? Just be like, oh, dear J J Jesuit, I am a fan of your show and podcasts in general, but mainly your show and mainly Danny Unicorn because I don't really like you very much. Send. Uh, that would be a rude one. To say. Don't send that note. Don't be, don't be that kind of person. See, I was just predicting that you would be a dick uh, because you're at the telegraph office. If you could just take pen to paper. And write a note talking about how much you love Jesuit, you love the show, whatever the fuck. It's not an email. I don't know what I'm talking about. I'm 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 a, I'm a mess, Danny. The Paranoid Strain is a podcast you should listen to. It's great. Download it now. It's available at the iTunes Store. Go ahead and check it out. It's lovely. He's talented, and uh, and she's brilliant. So go ahead and check it out. Get conspiracy theories delivered hot and steaming and torn apart by our good friend Fearful Jesuit, who is uh, who's really good at what he does. And you should give him a day in court. The Paranoid Strain Podcast is available now where you ever get podcasts, leave a review, write a note, and uh, and that's it. You'll enjoy it. I think my own self telling you to do that is uh, it's a true thing. You'll love it. Uh, our good friend Rob Matsushita, of course, has uh, YouTube.com slash Stay Home 2020. YouTube.com slash Stay Home. Fucking yawn. YouTube.com slash Stay Home 2020. Uh, he's doing videos. Uh, I think he's taking a month off. It's a hiatus of a month, but he should be back in a couple of weeks. But that doesn't matter. You can go there right now, and there's like nine videos waiting for you to watch, and you'll go, oh, and I'm, in, I'm even in one of those ridiculous videos. Uh, but check it out. That would be great. Go ahead and see it anytime you'd like. Uh, YouTube.com slash stay home 2020. That's what our buddy wants you to check out, and I can't blame him, God damn it. While you're over there at YouTube, did you know we have a YouTube channel? We do. YouTube.com slash the 40-year-old boy. Uh, the archives of this podcast are up there, of course, along with old stand-up. And then who knows what's going to come in the future? I wish I did. I'd tell you all about it. But I can tell you right now, just go ahead and subscribe to the channel. And then whenever new stuff comes up, you'll be checking it out, man, including every podcast. You'll be able to go ahead and relive them. Go listen to, I think, episode seven of year five and find out why I just got a, a, a fucking copyright infringement thing from, I think, David Bowie's people. Um, but go listen. I'm sure you'll love it. And then you can find out why David Bowie's estate demands four cents. Who the fuck knows? Um, I told them I had permission. I said, hey, I put pen to paper and said, hello, thin white duke. Would you care if my friend David did some of your awesome songs? His name is like yours. Sincerely, Mike. And then he said, uh, he wrote me in, he said, ashes to ashes, funk to funky, we'll let Max get songs and be funky. And I said, all right, I'll take this approval. And then he died. They don't believe me. Um, but that's fine. Whatever. Go check it out. The YouTube channel's there, youtube.com slash the 40-year-old boy. Go ahead and, and uh, visit it now. Um, we have a Twitch channel. What? Yes. We have a yawn channel. Fuck. We have a Twitch channel, twitch.tv slash the 40-year-old boy, where I'm often playing games. Uh, I'll be playing uh, puzzle games that you can join in on. I'll be doing Trailer Park, which is where I go watch a bunch of trailers 
uh, uh, you know, listeners suggest what we should go look at and we go look at it. It's totally fun, man. I like trailer park and, uh, look, I, you know, I know you love the podcast. Eh, love's a strong word, but if you do, then going to see these Twitch reruns or these Twitch channels, it's literally, it's, it's like getting a podcast every day. It's me there. I'm talking, I'm not playing games all the time. Actually, for the first half hour to hour, sadly, I wind up talking to people about a bunch of different stuff. And uh, and you might hear some stuff uh, on the Twitch channel that you hear in the podcast later, because sometimes I'll do the, pod, uh, the the Twitch channel. and I'm like, fuck, man, I should remember that to try to say on the show. Um, and then I don't make a note of it and I don't do anything or make an effort to go ahead and remember anything. And then I probably say some of it here on the show anyway, but you can go and hear a whole bunch of different stuff out of my mouth. If you go ahead to the Twitch channel, twitch.tv slash the 40 year old boy. I'm always there streaming. Uh, I'm only off like once or twice a week, but if you follow or subscribe to the channel, you'll always know when I'm on, man, go ahead and check it out. You'll know when I'm there. Do you know what discord is? There's a 40 year old boy discord. I don't have a link for you. I, I, I mean, if you have Discord, can you just search me in it? I don't know. It's 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 the forty year old boy, and it's all separate. The forty year old boy. You can check that out. It's uh, available now, but it's always available. It's a Discord. Join the fucking Discord, and then there's a Twitch folder. You can look in there and look at stuff, interact with fans and uh, listeners or friends, whatever you want to call them. And then also, when we're playing, that's where the codes go in, so you can play along with me. See how great it is? Look at the community we're building. It's so lovely. Follow and subscribe to the Twitch channel, please. Twitch.tv slash the 40 year old boy. Go ahead and join the discord. Uh, it's the 40 year old boy discord. I don't know where you would search it. I have no idea how this happened. Uh, John, my, my friend told me I needed to get a discord and I did. I couldn't tell you how I got it. I'm sure I downloaded it or something, but if you're on discord, find my channel, the 40 year old boy. I'm there waiting for you. Uh, Twitch, YouTube, paranoid strain. What else do I want to tell you guys, man? Oh, you know what? I'm uh I'm available for cameos. What? Yes, I am. Have you ever thought to yourself, you know what? I like Mike, but I'd like him a lot more if I could watch him on my phone screen talking about shit that I don't I, I tell him to. It's like controlling your own podcast, man. You can book a po- you can book a cameo for yourself where you and I will have a chat about fantasy football. And by a chat, I mean, I will yell at you for five minutes and then you'll go. Yes, yes, yes. You can talk back to the screen if you want. And also, here's a, here's something unique. If you want to book me for a cameo where we have a chat. Like, send me a script, and I'll read it to you, and then you can talk and interact with me. How great would that be? How fun would that be? Eh, probably not fun at all, but it might be great. Eh, who knows? Give it a shot. Write a script and book me for a cameo. Just book me, goddammit. It's important. Go ahead and hire me. <laughs> Why not? If you want me to call anybody in your family and tell them they're, like, what if you got a stepbrother? And you're like, hey, man, quit using my toothpaste. I happily do that. Now, do you really want to shell out $20 to have a stranger tell your stepbrother to stop using your toothpaste? I don't know what kind of money you got, fucking Rockefeller. Uh, maybe you got that kind of dough. Maybe you've got it like that. Maybe you've secured the bag, as the kids today say, and uh, and you, you want to just go ahead and share some of your largesse with me. Maybe you want to make it rain all over me by throwing green flat ropes on me, courtesy of your uh, of whatever job or lottery you've won. And so I'll get some big dough to tell your stepbrother to stop handling your fucking crest, man. Uh, or if you want me to tell your girlfriend you love her, you want me to tell your aunt you don't, I'm happy to do these things. You want me to tell a, an old teacher if you want me to thank him? Oh, I was, that's what I was telling you about my English teacher. Dude, there's two English teachers that I'm friends with on Facebook. One of them, he's active in threads. Like when when my friend will put up his thread and he'll be like, hey, what's your favorite shoe? And then he'll jump in and be like, ox tips or wing fucks or whatever the fuck. And then everybody's like, ooh, I remember you, Mr. H. And it's like, dude, you're not Mr. H anymore. This isn't dead poets fucking society. We're all we're all you now. We're older than you were then. Like you were the cool teacher then. Yes, you were like 30 and we were all 15 or 16 and went, whoa, he had us listen to Pink Floyd, the wall in English class. Awesome, Mr. H. But now... I'm 53 and that shit wears off. And so that means he's got to be like 65, right? And I'm sure he's a lovely gentleman. I don't, I don't want to start, you know, he used to, he was a great guy, but, but it just seems odd to even, even now when you were a kid, remember when you'd see a teacher in, in the fucking store and you'd be like, holy fuck, Mr. Secor eats broccoli. God damn it. I can't believe that just happened. Jesus Christ, Barb the Walsh errands and Joy's fucking post to toasties. That's fucking grim. Um, and you didn't want to see him. Because then what are you going to say? Hey, Miss Aarons, are you going to call her Barb? I mean, I don't know what the fuck to do. Uh, so that's the thing. It's still weird. Even though I'm 53, I don't want to see Mr. H lurking on Facebook. 
unless he's telling me I'm a genius and he likes my show, do that, Mr. H. Here's the thing. <laughs> don't don't just sneak in and go, you know who I like, Walter Payton. Remember him, kids? That's fine. But if, you, but if you're going to come into the show, just say you like fucking bananas and Mike Schmidt. That's all you got to do. I'll, you know, I respect that. Just come in and go, you know what I like, bananas and Mike Schmidt. Thanks, Mr. H. <laughs> Um, I, you know what? I listen to Pink Floyd all the, the wall all the time. And I think of you often. It happens quite a bit, but, but stay off my Facebook. It just, it's just creepy, man. It's like when I get a phone call from my local congressman, that happens a lot because I'm, I'm in the fucking system now. Right. Or I have been for years cause I vote. So it'll be like, like my phone will ring and I'm like, who the fuck is this idiot? And uh, which I say every time the phone rings, I don't know who it is. I don't care if it's somebody I know, whatever. I go, who the fuck is this idiot? Because again, nobody talks to anybody anymore, but my phone is ringing and I'm like, what the fuck? And then I don't get it. And then it leaves a fucking 90 second voicemail. Fuck you. Who are you? Me? And it leaves this long ass voicemail. And then I go to listen to it and it goes, hello, this is Congressman Brad Sherman. We're going to be having a family town hall and we really hope you would join us so we can talk about the coronavirus shut the fuck up brad sherman uh i don't think i even voted for him this time i think there was somebody on his left that i voted for but it's like whatever and i'm sure he's a good fella whatever the fuck he's as nice as mr h but don't be calling my fucking house and leaving 90 second voicemails again nobody wants to hear from i don't want to hear from you ever are you a name on a ballot i vote for you if it's just you against the fucking if you're if you're the guy, the standard bearer against the fucking republicans then yes i vote for you but i do some research there's a guy on your left i'm voting for him but you know what? Just because you won, and this guy's like a nine-termer, man. He's been around fucking forever. And he's going to call me and be like, hello, Mike, this is Brad Sherman, local congressman. I wanted to talk to you about the COVID virus. No, you didn't. You want to try to shore up votes. You want to shake my hand in an ugly way and give me the germ. You got the germ, Sherman? Are you German? Oh, my God, Brad Sherman? Instead of Brad Sherman, he's Brad German because he's got the vid. He's coming around. He's giving me the vid. Get away from me with the vid. Don't drop the 19 off at my house, German. Uh, what the fuck was I telling you about? Oh, Cameo. Yeah, book me, man. There's a, you can put it on your phone. It's an app. You can download it to your computer. Or no, you don't download it. You go visit it. It's bookcameo.com, I believe, is the app. And, uh, I mean, there's all sorts of fucking stupid people on there now, right? Like, every time I see a celebrity do something stupid on Twitter in my head, I'm like, is that person on Cameo probably? Uh, I don't know if you saw this week. Look, I don't even want to talk about this, but I'm gonna. Do you know who, do you know who fucking Brian Urlacher is? All right, I'll tell you who he is. Brian Urlacher is, I have one Bears jersey, and it's Brian Urlacher, right? And then this week, he comes out, and, and he's, he loves the doughy kid from Kenosha. And and he's he's mad at black people or whatever the fuck. And I'm like, oh, Jesus Christ. You know, you always see those people on the news, and they're like, oh, I'm going to burn my jersey, LeBron, you stroke. Oh, uh, let me tell you this, Kawhi, I can't wait to burn your jersey in the driveway. Because he went to another fucking team and everybody's stupid. I'm going to throw my coffee maker out the window because it's a lib coffee maker. Look at this spatula. It voted for Carter. I'm throwing it in the trash. I mean, everybody's an asshole, right? So I'm like, I don't, I don't get it. Uh, but now I get it because now I got a fucking racist football jersey in my goddamn locker or in my, in my, uh, in my closet. I, I don't. And I'm not going to burn the fucking thing. Like part of me is like, should I get this to Goodwill? But it's also it's an official NFL jersey. I mean, it cost me like 200 bucks. Uh, and, you know, I whatever the fuck. Don't 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 ever stand your fucking heroes, as the kids say today. Don't buy. I should have. And I knew I should have bought a Peyton jersey. You know what I mean? I knew I should have bought a Peyton jersey when it happened. But I was in a rush to get something. They had an Urlacher and it fit me. I had just lost a bunch of weight. I was so happy. And uh, and football season was starting and I had the fever. This is back in fucking 2006, five. And uh, I had just lost all the weight, so I was like, fuck this, man. I'm getting an official jersey. I've never had one. And uh, and so I went with Urlacher because he was a fucking hero at the time. Should have bought a Lance Briggs. Wouldn't have gone wrong with a Lance Briggs. Uh, Urlacher, what the fuck? Is he on Cameo? Does he call up and tell you that he doesn't like black people? I don't know what the fuck he does. Ignore him. Don't fucking hire him. None of these these tool bags were trolling anybody who was ever on Cameo, whatever the fuck. Hire me, God damn it. Hire me. I can be involved in your life for as little or as long as, as or as much as you want, whatever you need. <laughs> Cameo app goes on your phone or go to bookcameo.com. Find my name. Hire me to do whatever the fuck you want me to do, because what the fuck else am I doing these days? Right? Right. Also, you want to support this show? You can go to Patreon. 
Patreon.com slash Mike40YOB, or just Google Mike Schmidt and Patreon. You'll find me. There's my smiling face with a dimple or two. A little Schmidty is also lurking, and then you can sign up and go ahead and donate to the show. Thank you so much for anybody who has, anybody who goes ahead and becomes a patron of this show at Patreon. I appreciate it very much. Patreon.com slash Mike40YOB. Go ahead and find it now. Uh, or at least search, like I said, Mike Schmidt and search Patreon, and then you can become a person who gives stuff. That'd be great if you did that every month. I would love it. You would love it. We would love it. Who would love it? Wouldn't you love to love it with me too? Uh, also, in addition to Patreon, get this. You can give stuff via PayPal. If you don't want to become a Patreon patron, if you want to just give like a one-off, if you're like, you know what? I just want to give Mike $5,000 and not and be done with it, man. I don't blame you. So what you want to do is go to MikeSchmidtComedy.com. That's right. It's a website. And in the upper right-hand corner of that website, you're going to find a little Schmitty uh, virtually on every page with his pocket out. I think it says donate. And if you click on that, you'll go right to PayPal and you can give me a one-time PayPal boost. As I've said many times before, and I will probably say many times again, uh, if you're going to support this show, this is a really fucking good time to support this show. Yes, it comes out on Monday sometimes. Yes, it comes out on Saturday or Sunday sometimes. Yes, it's uh, a Friday or Thursday show. Well, it's supposed to be a Thursday show. And I'm... Uh, I'm going to work really, really hard at making it a Thursday show again. Uh, what would be great is if the world would cooperate and not let any more high school fat juniors shoot anybody dead in the street. So I have to ponder our existence for a couple of goddamn days because uh, I just get spun up. You know, I, I mean, uh, believe me, I could have gone live that night and been like, do, 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 attention, Mr. and Mrs. America and all the ships at sea. A fat kid shot a guy and then two other guys. And what the fuck's going on in Wisconsin? You cheese fox. I could have done that. But in my head, I wanted to have. Uh, I wanted to be thoughtful about it, which, as you could tell clearly by me talking about Giuseppe Raviolo, I was absolutely going to be as thoughtful as I possibly could. Um, but then, and then, uh, you know, fucking Chadwick Boseman died. It's, it's, let me ask you this. Uh, is there is there any anything good that's going to happen for black people this year? Or let's put it, I go the other way. Is there anything that isn't going to tear the hearts out of black people this year? I mean, it it just it is just endless, terrible death and loss. And I don't know what the fuck. And, you know, then you see these videos. You hear Chadwick Boseman is working with fucking stage four cancer. And uh, and that is insane. He made movies while he was stricken with cancer, including Black Panther, which, if you recall, when I saw it, I thought it was the best Marvel movie I'd seen. Uh, he's just an, an unbelievably talented man, but also a gifted human being who was kind and gentle and generous and looked up to, and we lose him. Why do we lose him? Why, when there's any number of these, these fat suit wearing ghouls who are ruining this country and destroying people's lives and livelihoods running around and just Steve Mnuchin's still alive and fucking, like I said, where's Ethan hunt when we need him to put a fucking blow gun into his mouth and, blast a dart into fucking Pence's neck, whatever the fuck. It's just a mess. These guys get away with all this bullshit and they don't die. They don't die. It's fucking granola eaters in the street. And and then, and unfortunately fucking black people are getting killed and and it's just, uh, nobody should die ever. Let's just all stay alive and try to be nice to one another. Couldn't you do that? Couldn't you do it for me? Mike Schmidt, your comedy internet chum. Ding. You're in the club, right? Don't you want to be nice to one another? Don't you want to go ahead and look out for one another? Don't you want to lay out a fucking red carpet for each other? Let's do that, shall we? Let's 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 do what we can to be as happy as we can and take care of one another for the rest of our goddamn lives because you know what? This is it. This is fucking it. It's the only planet we got. That's the only life we have. So do everything you can to make every second of it count. Now, I know you're thinking to yourself, well, Mike, you're sitting at a desk and you're talking nonsense at least once a week. Yes, you're right. But that's the best I can do. This is my job. It's what I do. It's what I'm best at. It is whatever gift I have that has been given to me. And I'm trying to do the best I can to use it to, as, as our friend Michael McKean said, carve out uh, some life with my own microphone shaped as a knife. He said a two wheeled knife, but I don't have wheels on this microphone. What if I did? Holy fuck. What if I made this thing like a goddamn fucking razzy jazzy, whatever the fuck scooter. And I rolled my microphone all over town. I will tell you this. I saw a fucking weird porn the other day. This is totally true. I saw a fucking chick. And uh, this is so dumb. Again, I don't look just fucking. We just want people fucking or whatever the fuck. That's fine. 
But it's always, hey, look, I'm stuck in a door. I better fuck you in the ass. It's always that kind of shit that happens, right? So this chick is like walking down the street and she's got a, first of all, Catholic schoolgirl shirt on or, or, or Catholic schoolgirl skirt on and then no panties. Good for her. But she sees, um, you know, those like lime scooters or bird scooters or whatever the fuck. Well, she sees one and instead of fucking uh, like like steering handlebars, it's got just a fucking dildo on it. Like on the handlebars instead of instead of like things you can grab with your hands. So she fucking, of course, like she makes this big smile like she's happy that she found. Look, man, I'm not even going to talk about all the hygienic issues that are there if you've got a dildo on the street. Because, again, these bird scooters are disgusting enough. I don't even know. I, I don't even want to walk past them half the fucking time. I don't know what fucking hobo or monster or drunk is thrown up on it or whatever the fuck. But this chick sees one with a dildo sticking out of it. And she's like, oh, my God, I got to saddle that thing up. So she does. She climbs on it and inserts this into herself. And then she's using her hips as she's rolling on this fucking thing to steer. She's got a dildo inside herself and she's driving this fucking scooter and steering all over the fucking place. And then she goes down. This is crazy. She goes down like a side street and there's a guy and she kind of winks at him and then she blows him in a doorway while while other people are walking by like just a, a half block away. The camera angle shows it. There's people living their lives and eating at Jimmy John's, or whatever the fuck. And this chick's blowing a dude with a with a fucking scooter dildo inside of her. And I'm like, Jesus Christ, that's fucking bananas. I, I mean, good for them. I don't, again, I don't understand why you need the gimmick. I, if, if those two just wanted to fucking rail each other, that's totally fine. And look, you know me, I'm a fan of outdoor sex. I got no issue with that. I'm, I'm what I mean, I, it's not even worth saying I don't have an issue with it. I'm on board with it. Fuck yeah, I got, I, I was, I had sex in a fucking corn maze. You know, I mean, I'm, I'm a fucking psychopath. I almost had fucking sex in a mire, and I've had sex in a Ralph's. I'm a weirdo. I mean, I'm, I get it. That's me. But I don't know. Seeing this chick fucking straddle on the scooter and then blow the guy in the alley, I'm like, well, this is too cute by half. Although I'm not gonna lie to you, it was. There, there is always something sexy about the woman being enthusiastic about suing something crazy dirty. And I am, I, I will not lie. That is something that absolutely appeals to me when a girl gets that fucking, that sexy, evil smile on her face. Like, yeah, you know what? I'm absolutely going to put this fucking random dildo scooter up inside me and steer down the street. You're kind of like, wow, that's fucking awesome. That's kind of cool. You know what it makes? It makes me go ding, 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 ding. <laughs> that's right. I see that. And that's my ding, ding, ding. Whether there's, you can have me in a pussy eating contest and I'm trying to elicit a ding, ding, ding. But if I see a chick who comes up and she makes that little face and kind of like looks around like, oh, this is going to be naughty. Oh, don't you love naughty? I got to be honest, man. I love naughty. I love, I love uh, willingness and I love fucking naughtiness and I love go ahead and fucking straddle that goddamn scooter and ride all over town Evelyn that's fine with me because eventually you're going to turn down this right street and find a guy to blow can't wait to see it I'm excited you know what I've talked myself out of it I'm like why do they need these stupid gimmicks why do you need to go hey there's my stepmom why don't I fuck her in a fucking Prius you know what I mean I'm like oh boo but now I've talked myself into enjoying Evelyn Dildo Rider and her blowjob adventures that's fucking cool with me I'm going to say that I'm thinking that that it's a great thing. You might not think it's a great thing, but I think it's the greatest thing I've ever seen now, and I've talked myself into it. Seconds ago, I didn't like it, but now look at me. Now, you know what? What's that? There's anything I like more than me It's people who like me I love me, but if you love me I love you, cause you know why We both love me, how great am I Let's talk about that for a while And by a while, I mean forever Podcast! Podcast! Podcast.